all right hello everyone and peace of christ to all of you please invite your friends i know that many people expect me to be live on this time but i chose to do so so we can have people from far east asia etc to be able to join us because usually we do our broadcast when they are asleep and this is not fair so please invite your friends and let us see what we will do for today you know there's tons of articles speaking about converting to islam hmm. and i find those articles uh, as a kind of a comedy and you know be my witness if you are a muslim um I will open my Skype soon, so if you are a Muslim, you can call me, and you can tell me how truthful those articles. And the funny, the Muslims even they don't say if you convert into Islam, they say revert to Islam, as if Islam is like a Christian sect. You know what I mean? The word revert, the Muslim they use it in order to deceive you to make you believe that we worship the same God. Actually, one of you he said to me that. Uh, 15 minutes ago or 20 minutes ago uh, David Wood and Sam Shamoon they were talking about God and somebody asked Sam Shamoon a question if the word Allah is a word used for a previous God and Sam Shamoon he said it's used by many other religions including the Christians and the Jews and it's just a word coming from the word Al-Ilah for me absolutely this is absolutely wrong definitely wrong now, I respect uh, Sam Shamoon, you know, but this is absolutely far away from the truth. And I advise him to study more and to read more. Secondly, the problem between us and Islam is not the name of God. Let us say the Muslims, they change the name of their God and they call him Jesus. Still, he is not our God. You know, if you take a name of something and you place it on something else, still that something else is not that name because it's just a fake name you know what i mean to be sharing the same god we have to share the same value and the same same ethic and we have to say to shame to sorry to share the same bedroom like the kaaba like did the gods before uh, the god who was before muhammad uh, the god of the christian the god of the jews said to us to go around this rock and kiss it and lick it and bow down around it did is it ever mentioned something like this this is you know so we have nothing to sue to to to, to share between what it's called islamic and what it's called christianity or judaism and by the way, you know, uh, you will see some Jews who reject uh, Jesus. Um, they always say all bad things about Christianity, but it doesn't matter really for me if the Jews accept Jesus or not. I mean, that will not change anything. The Jews, even the Bible in the Old Testament says that God, he, he punished them for forsaking God many times. So nothing new, nothing changed, and nothing will change. Uh, but I believe that the Lord, he have a plan for, for, uh, for Israel. And, um, you know, the good news is, is most of the Jews already, they are Christians, which means there is a small minority. They are refusing the Messiah to be the Messiah. Uh, now we will go and see an article written by Muslims. And let us reasons to gather at the 10 or the reasons to be a Muslim. I was going over those reasons. I was laughing. 106 reasons 106 reason why I converted to Islam and you will notice right away here the Muslim they say to you why haven't you reverted to make you believe that we have a belief which is the same belief because reverted is like transforming yourself from a sect to the other sect it's just it's not a new religion it's just a sect which is absolutely false oneness of God you see, the Muslims, they, they, give a, they give us headache about the oneness of God, but it's very funny. I mean, if your God is one or two or three, who care? What we care for, if is it true or not? You have one God, but he's an idiot. You have one God, but he says that the baby uh, created in a very funny way. The sperm is coming from the chest of the woman, and the man have a sperm coming from his backbone. So here we go. You have one God, but he is one idiot. And there is many religion in the world they believe in one god so what a big deal do you understand me people 
I will open my Skype soon. So if you are a Muslim, Abdul, please you give me a call and we can have a conversation together so we can love together. So here we go. I have one God. I worship. Uh, I want to worship my remote control. My remote control. You are the only God. I worship you. Have many bomb. Nobody like you. You control everything around me. Thank you very much. I mean, okay. Now, remote control is better than Allah. At least, at least he is useful. Your God, Allah, not only he is useless, he is harmful. How many people killed in the name of Allah? How many people is slaughtered just today in the name of Allah? What the purpose of this God, Allah? You say to me, we have one God. What is that? One criminal? One uh, mad? You know, what is that? So first of all, there's no proof that you Muslims even have a God because all what you keep saying to us, we have a God, his name is Allah. And the funny, if we ask you who is Allah, you don't even know. I'm asking Muslims all my life, who is Allah? Nobody can answer me. Or what they say to me, funny answers like, oh, he is the creator. Who thank you very much for telling me. <laughs> that's that's a news for me. Creator of what? Oh, he created the whole world, brother. Do you have a proof? No. Do you even know what Allah means? No. Did Muhammad, your God, your prophet, he spoke to Allah? No. Did he see Allah? No. Did he hear even the fart of Allah? No. So Muhammad never spoke to Allah. He never saw Allah. He never met Allah. He never heard the, the, the fart of Allah. But yet he is teaching us about Allah. I mean, isn't it? This is amazing. Okay, let me teach you about Allah. Allah is like a balloon. Okay, prove me wrong. Why you accept Muhammad saying to you what Allah is, but you don't accept what I am saying to you? I did not see Allah. He did not see Allah. I did not speak to Allah. He did not speak to Allah. I did not hear Allah. He did not hear Allah. So how he is the one who can tell me about Allah? Do we have any Abdul in the bushes? Let us continue. Uh, you know, this is why I say, like, you know, sometime, uh, let me teach you about the philosophy or logic. <clears throat> there is a Muslim Abdul, but by the way, philosophy and logic is haram in Islam. This is why they have no logic when they speak, and they are very funny. There's a Muslim Abdul decide to take a logic class. Sit down, guys, sit down, sit down. Uh, bring, bring your popcorn. So a Muslim Abdul, he decided to take a logic class. And he entered the logic class, first time ever he hear about it. So he asked the teacher, Sir, Assalamu Alaikum. The teacher, he said, Wa Alaikum Assalam. He said, so sir, what is the logic? What is this logic thing? Explain to us, please, please. So the teacher, he is trying his best to make it simple. He said to him, okay, logic is to learn about something else from knowing something which means like I know one information and that information will lead me to other information which I do not know the Abdul he said to him mashallah but still I don't understand the teacher he said to him well I will ask you a question or a few questions and that will lead me to know more about you can I the Abdul he said sure sure go ahead brother the teacher, he said, do you have a chain in your house? Abdul, he said, yes, I have a chain. The teacher, he said, as long as you have a chain, that's mean you have a dog. The Abdul, he said, wow, how you know I have a dog? The teacher, he said, because you have a chain. And now because you have a chain and you have a dog, that's mean you have a house, have a garden. The Abdul, he said, mashallah, yes, I have a house, have a garden. The teacher he said because you have a chain and you have a dog and you have a house have a garden that's mean your 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 house is big and your mother is taking care of it he said yes my house is big and my mother she is taking care of it he said because you have a dog you have, you have a chain you have a dog you have a big yard you have a, a garden you have a big house and your mother is taking care of it that's mean your mother is a wonderful woman and she is a good woman the Arabian guy, he said, wow. He said, see, 
So from the chain, we were able to know that your mother is a good woman. So now the Arabian guy, he learned logic and he wanted to practice it. So he went in the street and he asked the first person he met in the street. He said to him, do you have a chain? The guy, he said, no. He said, your mother is a whore. This is how Muslims, they learn logic. If you don't have a chain, your mother is a bad woman. If you have a chain, obviously your mother is a good woman. So the Muslim, they don't give us logic, they give us stupidity. And I try to find the logic in their logic, I find nothing except stupidity. So do you have a chain? Okay, do you have oneness of God? If you don't have oneness of God, okay, your mother is a whore. That's what they say to you, you know, like you are kafir. You are dirty. You are a scumbag. My friend, there's many religions have one God, and Christians worship one God, and the Jews worship one God, and even the pagan Egyptian, they used to worship one God, and what the big deal? There's a church in, in, in San Francisco, it's called the Church of Satan, they worship Satan, he is their God. I mean, this is the most silly, stupid thing to say. I accepted the religion of Islam because Islam is the only religion in the faith of the earth which is strongly believe one God. If, 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 if there is only, there is nobody. <laughs> what a dummy statement. God has no God. If, 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 I did watch, I, did you watch the Titan movie, my friend? So the Muslims, and they are quoting for you supposedly, you know, and by the way, I think this is all is like fiction, uh, quotation. God has no God. Wow. God has no God. No, in Islam, God has God. As an example, if the Muslims, they see something in the Quran, Allah saying something, and Muhammad says something, the Muslim, they accept, and they, they obey the order of Muhammad over the order of Allah. So who is, God, who is the God? The Quran says, do muta. Muhammad later, he said, don't do muta. Which one of you Muslims you follow? Muhammad is the man, Allah is the God. Muhammad, he says something, you obey the man over God. Why? Because they say to you, Allah, he gave him authority. That's mean he is the God. As long as Allah is the one who said, do muta, then the one who should be able to cancel the order is God himself, not a man. But to cancel the order of God, which you call him God, by a man, that's mean the man is more powerful than God, and he became God for you. So the Muslims always lie to themselves and say, we have God who has no God. The fact Allah is not exist, Muhammad is the true God of Islam. All the orders of Islam is based on Muhammad, not based on Allah. Muslims, they never saw the angels, they never spoke to the angels, they never saw Allah, they never spoke to Allah. Muhammad is the one who said, I, I am the one Allah told me. The funny, <coughs> in Islam, if you want to prove adultery, you have to bring four witnesses. Now, which one is more dangerous? Adultery, a guy sleeping with the women, or somebody claiming to be a prophet? We have a prophet, he don't have a witness for anything happened to him in his life. Hey, by the way, guys, yesterday, oh, uh, I was uh, doing my dishes, and I noticed that the dishes are like getting cleaned faster. So I was wondering why, and I noticed that there is a hand, somebody is giving me a hand to wash dishes. And then I finished the dishes fast, and it was super fast actually, and then I noticed that there is the dishes are like being dried fast too, and then I noticed that this is Jibreel. Why Jibreel is washing dishes with me? Because he have to take the dishes, because he, dishes, he brought it to me later, before he brought me pizza. I mean, Islam is based on a guy, his name is Jibreel, he is the pizza guy. Nobody saw him, nobody know him, nobody heard of him. And Muhammad himself, he do not know who is Jibreel. If you ask Muslims what Jibreel means, they do not know. Have you ever heard of religion? If you ask them, okay, the guy who come to you, his name is Jibreel. What Jibreel mean? They do not know. Nice to meet you. That's mean you stole the name from somebody else. 
Yes, they stole the name from the Jews. This is why they do not know what Jibreel means. If you ask the Muslim what Ibrahim means, they don't know. If you ask them what Allah means, they don't know. If you ask them what Israel means, they don't know. If you ask them who is Israel, they do not know. If you ask them what Isa means, they don't know. If you ask them what the Messiah means, they don't know. If you ask them what Moses means, they do not know. For this is a cult based on collection of story names. If there is a Muslim wanna call me, please let me know so I will open my Skype. <clears throat> uh, guys, invite your friends. I know it's too early. Uh, this is why we have a very low number. We have about 300 people only, but it's okay. Allah is very important in Islam. If, 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 if. My guys, Allah is very important in Islam to the point everybody, Allah and the angels, and let me show you how important Allah is in Islam. <clears throat> Allah is important in Islam to the point if you fight with your wife and your name is Muhammad. Hmm? Allah will Allah in your service. Do you see how important? You see, when we speak about God, we think that there is a religion who respect that God. But you notice that this God is a shish kebab God. He is like a, a, a you know, is a name to threat people with, it's just to scare them. Muhammad in this story in front of us, he have a fight with his wives. You see how important that God is? Muhammad, he have a fight with his wives. And the wives, obviously, they found Muhammad having sex with their slaves in their bed, cheating on them. This is how disrespectful he is. And then Muhammad, he gave up. So look what he did. And actually, he is copying here a statement of Umar al-Khattab, and then he made it the Quran. He said, if you too turn in repentance to him, which means to Allah, you, can, you see, if the women disagree with their husband, they are not a good woman. They have to repent to Allah. You are making a crime against Allah because you are not being, you know, like a, like a rag. Muhammad can walk on you. The women, they saw him having sex in their bed. What do you mean? Who is the one should repent? Who is the one should repent if my wife she opened the door on my room in her bed and she see me in the top of other women and now they are the one who should repent have you ever heard of backward religion like this before the guy who was cheating in his wives is not the one should repent it is the women who get upset for seeing their husband have him bang bang with the wife or oh, sorry with the slave the servant and then he said to them if you don't huh and if you back up each other huh if you back up each other okay guess what guess what guess what allah is very important look what the job of allah if you back up uh, each other against him truly 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 allah is his protector allah is a, uh, this is the job of allah the job of Allah is to protect the husband who is cheating in his wives. And this is how important he is. Do you see how important Allah is? This is the job of Allah. Allah has nothing to do in life. This is chapter 66, verse number 4. Allah is so important to the point he is now between he is he's standing behind Muhammad against who against the wives of Muhammad and why the wives of Muhammad against Muhammad because they found him doing bang bang in their bedroom and now Muhammad is threatening them if you don't repent which means they have they are the bad ones not him have you ever heard of a perverted cult like this before? And instead of saying, I was wrong, sorry, I will not do it again. Please forgive me and pray to God not to do so. The man, he have tons of wives waiting for him in the bedrooms. Why you are sleeping with someone else? And how dare you to sleep with someone else in the bed of your wife? Which would make the crime double. 
and now they are the one who should repent not him and then he says if you don't uh, if you back up against him uh, truly truly Allah is his predator and Jibreel here we go I mean that the Muhammad he have a team Muhammad will not fight his wives alone this is how man he is you want to fight me are you sure okay let me tell you who is going to be behind me now okay Allah and Jibreel and every righteous one among those who believe so if there is one billion Muslim now they will be standing before behind Muhammad holding their sword takbir, and they will do jihad against the two wives of Muhammad and still not enough and furthermore furthermore the angels I mean do you see what this religion is about we have a guy, his name is Muhammad, cheating on his wife, sleeping around in their bed, making their bed dirty with his sperm, insulting the wives, don't care about her emotion. He is being a donkey, he is being a filthy, sleeping in the bed, in the wife bed, and yet they have to repent. And because they are not repenting, Allah and Jibreel and all the believers and all the, the who is left in the world, the whole universe is backing up Muhammad. This is a religion and Allah is very important. As you see, everybody, the important here is one person. His name is Muhammad. Allah, he took, he, Allah, he left the office, his office in seven heaven, galaxy, seven, uh, seven, whatever. And he came down to stand with Muhammad and the angels, they took, they, they left everything in their hand. They have nothing to do in life except protecting Muhammad from his wives. The wives of Muhammad are aggressive, my friend. Arabian women are very aggressive. Ask me, ask me. That's why I'm still single. First of all, they are very hairy. Very hairy. And Muhammad, by the way, Muhammad, he forbid women from taking hair from their face. I mean, are you mentally ill? The funny, he have no problem to color his hair to make it red. Why? The woman, she cannot take hair from her face because if you do that, you are changing the way Allah, he made you. So why are you coloring your hair red? And why you shave your mustache? Actually, even Muhammad, he used to do something. It's called an nawra Anyone knows what an nawra Who knows what an nawra Muhammad, he used to take hair from his body. It's like wax, you know. So why Muhammad, he can do wax to his private part and the whole body, but women, they cannot take hair from their face. Why? Because he's a madman. And if a woman, she remove hair from her face, Allah will curse her. I mean, what does God, you see how Allah is important? Allah is watching every one of you now, women. If you take hair from your face, Allah is looking like, what are you doing? Let me write your name here. What's your name? Shakira, Shakira, taking hair from her face. Shakira, Shakira, I'm going to punish you in judgment day. You took the hair from your face today. You broke my command. I am very important. I am Allah. I'm watching your hair. I like you to have a beard. Have you ever heard of a silly, stupid cult more than this? So when you read the articles, the Muslim, they write, I mean, it is hilarious. What if you add some hair to your hair? You know, some girls, they add fake hair to their hair. Allah, he will curse you. Hmm? Allah will curse you. You see, all of those. Hmm? Do you see? Allah will curse you. Allah, apostle, has cursed. Such a lady which has artificial long hair you see how perfect islam is islam makes sense you are cursed not because you are sleeping around you know islam a woman she can do muta she can open her legs and get paid for that and this is halal 
but Allah will not curse you for that Allah will curse you if you add some hair to your hair I mean obviously Islam is a very logical religion Allah will not curse Muhammad for having sex with a child at the age of six her name is Aisha but Allah will curse a woman for having adding hair to her hair what if the woman she is losing her hair what's your what is the problem of Allah how that is against Allah hmm? Every Muslim can explain to us how this is against Allah. Madness, stupidity. What I see in the front of me is a certified proof that Allah, your God, is an idiot, and the one who said that he is an officially certified idiot. This is cannot be from God. This is a madman. His name is Muhammad. And I believe the reason behind this because the wives of Muhammad they were asking him to buy uh, this hair and he didn't want to spend money. So let us make it simple. Husband, I like to buy nice dress from uh, Gucci. I curse Gucci and the one who wear the clothes from Gucci. Here we go. Who dare now to wear it from Gucci? Otherwise, I challenge any Muslim to explain to me what is the purpose of this logic. I mean, is that a decency? Is that will make a woman decent? Women is decent, have nothing or decency have nothing to do with adding hair to her hair. Are we listening to Muslims? What about removing hair? Hmm? <laughs> the prophet is removing hair from around his private part and this is 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 to be published by CNN so the prophet he can remove hair from his body but women they cannot remove hair from their face why mr muhammad you need to remove hair around your penis hmm? do we have any muslim so if a woman she remove hair allah will curse her but if muhammad remove hair he is a blast huh Five are the acts of fitra, fitra, which means natural thing to do. Circumcision. Hold on. You said that if a woman she remove hair, she is changing the look of Allah, how He made her. You said if a woman she add hair to her hair, she isn't changing the way Allah He made her. Now, isn't it circumcision? Is it changing the way Allah He made you supposedly? Are we listening, guys? Do you see the stupidity? The reason he cursed them for adding hair or adding a tattoo or for taking hair from their face because they are changing the way Allah He made them. But isn't it circumcision? Is it changing the way that God He made you? You are born with it. It's not the devil who added there. Is it doing all of this, clipping your mustache, cutting your nails, blocking your hair from he, he even block the hair? So why you can block hair, but they but women cannot do it. And by the way, why Muhammad did not do circumcision too? <clears throat> As long as circumcision is a must for every Muslim, why Muhammad did not do circumcision? Stupid religion. The same page it says that a Muslim man he should do. This is for Muslim man, by the way. What you see in the front of you, this is for Muslim man. But look what Muslim women she should not do. Hmm? That the Prophet S A W Mercedes Benz Mercedes F M stereo Bluetooth 
said the prophet is a w bluetooth cursed the women who practice tattooing and those who seek to be tattooed and the women who remove hair from her faces but what the heck he just told us that it is a five things every muslim man should do and he mentioned removing hair and he himself used to remove hair so why the muslim women she cannot remove hair this is why, by the way, there is no Muslim woman. She is following Islam. In order to see a Muslim woman, she is following Islam. Really, you have to see. You will notice right away if she is really a religious. You will see she have mustache and she have a very thick eyebrows, especially if she's a Middle Eastern, you know, and she have a beard. You know, maybe like for uh, European people, they don't have too much hair in their body. You know, we are Middle Eastern. We are very hairy. You know, once I I was kicked out from the swimming pool because they thought I'm swimming with my clothes. But the fact it was not, it was just my hair, which is not fair. And actually, once I was debating an atheist, and he told me, well, look at yourself. Here we go. I'll prove to you that the origin of a human being is ape. And why? Because a Christian prince is very hairy. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Very logical. Do your mother have a chain? No. Hmm? Here you will see that the Muslim they try to focus in silly stupid stuff to fool you But in fact Islam is the most stupid hypocrite religion The funny in the Muslim they say Islam is very practical. What is the practical about your wife having a goat beard? And why Allah will be hurt if your wife she have a hair additional to her hair What if your wife she lost her hair? What if she became bald? What her fault? So now, just because your Allah Majesty, you know, he decided that could occur. Why Muhammad, he color his hair, but the wife, she cannot have an addition. Here we go, you are changing the look of Allah. So when the Muslim, they speak about worshiping one God, you don't worship one God, you worship one Muhammad. And your Muhammad is an idiot. The funny in this article, they say, that one of the things we like about is the character of the prophet. We will go there. Allah hear me when I call him. Yeah, right. The Muslims are praying for my death since century ago. Christian prayers. You know, actually, you know what? There's a guy, his name is a Muslim knight. He opened a chat room in Paltok. Huge chat room. Muslims coming from everywhere because now they want to pray and make a prayer for Christian prince. And they start praying. Allah, may Allah make a Christian prince the train hit him. Allah, may Allah give him heart attack. And all the chat room says, I mean, and I was there by the way. I was saying, I mean, too. I was there. I was saying, I mean, you know, I mean, Allah destroy Christian prince. Allah, I, and I say, I mean, you know, in the text, you know, the guy in the mic speaking, the Muslims are going crazy praying for my death. Less than 24 hours after, the guy who was praying for my death, he have a heart attack and he died. Actually, I did not know really what happened, but they told me he is like almost dead. And since then, I never saw him in the, in, in the, in the Paltok program. So obviously, he's, he died. So here we go. You gather hundreds of people to pray for my death and then you die. Obviously, your God is not working, my friend. You need to change your God. They are praying for destruction of Israel, and here we go. Look at your countries and look at Israel. Your God always hear you? Are you sure? Are you sure? Actually, even the Hadith says clearly that Allah is deaf and he have a bad reception. If you go in the Hadith, you will see the Hadith says the following. Invite your friends, guys. If you are a Muslim, invite your four wives and 70 kids. So we can go and do uh, migration to Europe. Our Lord, the blessed and the exalted, descend every night to the lowest heaven when the third uh, of, of the later part of the night is left. And he says, Who supplicate to me? So that I may answer him. What? Your God, Allah, he come down every third part of the night. 
why he need to go down Allah he cannot hear me you, you just told me Allah he hear me and as long Allah will not hear me unless he go to the third to in the, he go down in the third part of the night to the lowest heaven that's mean all the five prayer Muslim they pray they are praying the wrong time because Allah is not there he can't hear them where the prayer is gone do we have any Abdul here if there's any Abdul in the bushes please let me know I will open sky for you <clears throat> hmm? I receive a message from a guy he said to me I used to pray for you to be killed every day and now I pray I am very thankful that you did not die how I found that I was a stupid to curse you they pray for me they pray for evil they don't know I'm trying to help them look with me this is your God how God is almighty, but yet he have to go down. I feel sorry for your God. He have to take, he have to wake up very early every night. And he have to come down just to hear who is supplicating for him. Why? He cannot do it from his uh, chair. Sorry, guys, I have to go downstairs because here my reception is bad. So I have, I cannot hear you here. Okay. I have to go seven stairs downstairs, seven stairs, because only my reception, at and t work only there. How this is God? Same time, the Muslim they say to us, Allah is not inside His creation, but as you see, He is going inside His creation. Please let me know if there is any Abdul would like to call us. By the way, uh, I want to say a special thanks for uh, what His name. Hold on. I know that many of you are they make donation but there is a there is a, a crusader and uh, fainting uh, I forgot you know there's like few of you they make they make a uh, they make donation and I know why they are making donation I really appreciate those people I think they are making donations so they can tell you like they are trying to remind you of what you do because I don't speak about it but I wanna I wanna say special thanks for those people because I never spoke to them I do not know them I have no idea who they are but yet they always try to support me and try to remind people of of helping so special thanks for them I never did that before by the way I mean to mention people who donate but uh, I noticed that always they come here and they try I mean okay he donated once he donated twice he did it three time but this guy he keep doing it and that lady keep doing it and obviously they are doing it just to remind people to to help so uh, it, it's very very kind of them and i really appreciate them now we go back to the topic yeah fainting and the crusader and there is some other names uh <clears throat> If we go back to the article to see more lies <coughs> Allah has no image look at this lie Allah has no image the first time I came to know Allah has no image was when there was a visit to masjid for non-muslims conducted by Islamic affair department after hearing the explanation about Allah that he is the almighty all-knowing all-powerful I accept Islam I mean your God is not almighty and not all-knowing and not all-powerful we can prove it easy same time he have an image and whoever told you that he have no image is a liar whoever said that to you is a liar If we go and read the hadith, we will find the following. <clears throat> Allah has no image, right? Yeah, right. <clears throat> Here we go. 
it says here that Allah has an image and the Muslim they translate the word image as a shape Allah will come to them in a shape other than they knew so mean which mean Allah is a change in his shape I, I there is a movie it's called the transformer look like Allah is one of those transformer if we ask the Muslims what is the logic that Allah he changes shape they will not know they will say Allah knows best I mean Allah knows best but he know nothing as I know Allah knows nothing he do not know best and will never know know anything about best what Allah knows about knowing best that the baby is created from a sperm coming from the backbone of the man and from the ribs of the women as in chapter 86 verse number seven so if you convert it to Islam because Allah has no image I mean this is very silly lo logic by the way because what does have to do with with the with believing in God to be exist or not if your God has no image that's mean he is like what uh, water he take any image we put him in the class he would became a class we took him in the box he became like a box what does that mean how silly to say I believe that Allah is God because he have no image when the fact is not true Allah have a shin you know you can watch my videos I made just a few days ago about Allah have a physical body and even Zakir Naik be me Allah plus him and keep him protected from the police because he's wanted he admit that Allah yes Allah has a body what do you mean he have no image who is the liar he said that to you my friend never learn Islam from Muslims they do lie they do lie when I was studying Islamic law <clears throat> for some people maybe do not know I have a degree in in, in law which is Islamic law supposedly I never learned anything about Islam because who dare to question you know what you learn what they want you to know and what you wanted to know that Allah is amazing Muhammad is amazing Islam is perfect the law of Islam is perfect when it's the most stupid cult ever but who dare to question I did not learn from the school I have to work myself to learn what Islam teach Otherwise, Islam doesn't, you know, it's not, you go to Islamic school, they teach you nothing. They will never speak about something negative. They will never answer a question. You don't even allow, you're not allowed. The Quran in chapter 5, verse 101, it says it clearly, ask not questions. <clears throat> ask not questions. Okay, why we cannot ask questions? Because if you ask questions, that will be a problem. Islam has no answers. It's very embarrassing. Verse number 102, it says why? Because if you ask questions, let me show you. Okay. And the funny, the number of the verse is 101. <laughs> it's a miracle. Do you see it? Why we cannot ask questions? Verse 102 says why. Because if you ask questions, you leave Islam. The second you ask questions, first of all, Allah has no answer. Muhammad, you do not know what he's talking about. He's a thief. He's a false prophet. And now you want to ask questions. Okay, and who is going to answer you? Allah, he has no answers. So this is a cult based on ask no questions.
and the funny is says ask on things which is made plain to you I mean if I cannot ask about things made plain to me I will ask you about things I know I mean how stupid this this this, this phrase is imagine I ask you where is the direction of this place and I know the direction so people will not ask you questions about things they knew they will ask you questions about things they do not know <laughs> So what do you mean ask questions about things you you know you, you, they are playing for you so what they will ask you a question about what do you see how crazy this cult is and in the verse which is after it says because because of those questions some people before you they ask to say such questions and they lost their faith and the Muslim they try to explain this by giving you all the funny stupid excuses where is Allah oh you cannot ask that how Allah look like you cannot ask that okay Allah has a hand how the hand of Allah you cannot ask that Allah have a shin. How his shin look like? You cannot ask that. Okay, how Allah is God, but he, you know, he says stupid things. Oh, you cannot ask that. Ask any question you want, as long as it is silly and stupid. Like, as an example, allowed questions. Brother, can I shave under arms? Now, you will see the scholar he have, he is like excited, and he will give you all the answers you want. He start giving you, quoting you hadith, the prophet he used to shave his pubic area. The prophet used to do sugar. He used to wax his bum. Uh, suddenly, it's halal. A brother, can a man, sorry, can a woman wash her vagina after masturbation? And right away, the scholar, he will start quoting for you that, yes, brother, a woman, her name, Um Musaleen. And she is the anti of the prophet and later she offer herself to sleep with the prophet look how decent this nation is the prophet the brother she came to him and she said to him i saw uh i saw a wet dream she said what a wet dream a decent muslim woman Coming to a prophet, decent prophet, asking him about seeing what the man see in his dreams, masturbating. What I should do now? Should I wash my vagina? The prophet, for sure, he is ready to answer. He is all knowledgeable. And not only that, Muhammad he claimed in the answer that the sexual liquid in the vagina of the women is the reason for the women or for the baby to resemble the look of the parent or the mother in this case obviously allah is all-knowing do you see it abdul do we have any muslim would like to call me <clears throat> Until now, all those quotations we saw in this website are nothing but a joke. Can I ask you some verses in the Quran? My friend, you can ask me no problem, but as you see, we have a topic we need to cover. There's 106 reason to convert to Islam. Man. Yes, I see a reason here. I see a reason Muhammad is proving to us that he is a scientist. How Muhammad he knew that if women have orgasm, first, the baby will resemble her. Allah told him. The liquid in the vagina, a liquid there, that is the one who will make the baby resemble the parent. Obviously, this is scientifically correct. Anyone feel like converting to Islam now? Any Muslim in the bushes will tell us what's happening here. Hmm? This is what is it? 
they told you that Allah is all man and, uh, and knowledgeable if you ask the Muslim who uh, you know by the way here Muhammad he say clearly that the one who taught him this all is Jibreel the Muslim they say to us Muhammad is illiterate and they claim that everything he say is Wahyun Yuha which means it's inspiration from Allah No, we cannot call Zakir Naik now because you know, is he up? Is Zakir Naik up or is still asleep? <clears throat> because last time I called him, he said he's going to sue me and he accused me of sexual harassment because I'm calling him after the middle of the night. Shall we call him? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, assalamu alaikum, brother. Christian Prince, I told you, I told you one thousand time, don't call me anytime, anytime. I told you, I give up. Uh, just hold on, Zakir Naik. How you know it's me? I know you. You are my son. You follow me everywhere. I go to the bathroom, I see you. I go to the bedroom, I see you. I open my refrigerator, I see you. I open my freezer, I see you. You are everywhere, man. Leave me alone. Uh, brother, are you saying that I am almighty? What do you mean you see me everywhere? Your prophet, he used to see things too. Are you suffering from the same problem? Now, why are you calling me? Uh, brother, the prophet, he said that if a woman, she have orgasm first, the baby will be a female. If the man have an orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. What is your take on that? First of all, this is very true. I asked my parents, and I asked them how I became the correct. And my parents, they said to me, that my father have orgasm for it and I look exactly like my father and if you want more proof than this I don't know what to do for you okay so Zach and Nick, you are saying to me you look like father exactly like your father exactly are you sure to be sure with you I am not sure because my father he looked totally different however this is what the prophet said and we have to agree with the prophet Whoever come first, the child will resemble the parent. This is your prophet. I promise you, I promise you, if I get married, just to avoid my son will not look like me, I will never come first. Excuse me. I mean, I don't want him to look ugly. I don't have a mirror at home because I'm scared of myself. First time I moved to this place, there was a mirror in the bedroom. I entered the bedroom. I saw. I, I got. I ran away. I got out. Like I, I was going to call the police. So, brother, now thank you for helping us, brother. Thank you. Now I know how we can avoid such a disaster to happen again. So, if the women have orgasm first, the baby will be a girl. If the man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy, and he will look like his father. And you are telling me that Muhammad is not a prophet. Hmm? Are you serious? Who is a Muslim here? He is convinced that this is must be a prophet of God who speak from God knowledge. Anyone? <clears throat> Any Abdul? Dan Gibson okay I don't know really who is Dan Gibson but I heard uh, I heard the brother J Smith is speaking about him uh, uh, you know I post actually the video the same video which J Smith he posted in my page and I encourage everybody to subscribe like there is a uh, he mentioned this person he mentioned uh, uh, Hatun the lady her name Hatun she's a good woman wonderful woman uh, brother Jacob he have a channel you know I think and uh, <clears throat> I mean he mentioned many channels go guys you do not need me to tell you what to do I mean the good things always do not need to be said to do it if you see somebody you think he deserve to support him support him uh,
for me I mean I, I do my best but we should we as a Christian we should do better you see there's there's something the Muslims are like about them we don't have Muslim they sponsor each other doesn't matter what what you do even if it's stupid like as you see in the screen which is always Islam is stupid Christians don't you have to you have to hold the hand of the Christian guy to make a give a like okay hold your hand here okay here there's a like hit here you have to tell him you know Muslim right away they take the videos they share the videos so you see a guy posting something stupid and then at the end of the night he have 10,000 view Christians they come here they love oh you are funny oh you are teaching us oh okay thank you very much and then they go sleep and then that's it it's over if I don't say give a like nobody will give a like or maybe few if we don't say download and share nobody would do download and share actually all of you you know how many times I deleted all my videos all of them just because people don't download I keep saying download please download please share please download you see I don't even say share like with me share in my channel with somebody else no download them take them for yours and even make money from them you know add advertising on the top of them still there is few would do it all right very few they care really but anyway God is good we are the quality we are not about the quantity the quantity is not really important the quality is important I can prove you and all a Christian you are are Muslim according to John 6 40 uh, okay John are you a Muslim my friend the guy who called himself John how you are a Muslim and you call yourself John why you are doing that to yourself <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Do you want to call me, my friend? Do you feel like you want to call me? Hmm? Is this guy is a Muslim? <coughs> if there is any Muslim, please let me know. I don't know. Maybe he's uh, trolling. The verse you quote for me, my friend, the verse you quote for me, proving that there is a son. It was a joke. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, anyway, I mean, as you see, this is the stupidity of Islam. And then they make tons of articles for you to fool you. And the problem is, you see, maybe those articles are funny, but those articles can be convincing for somebody is naive. This is why you need to share knowledge with your children. And this is why what we do is extremely important. Don't wait until your child come back home and a bunch of Muslims, they lie to him and deceive him. Then it's going to be very hard to convince him that Islam is a very bad religion. Don't wait until you get the flu to fight the flu. There's something called the flu shot. And here I'm talking about something I do. That is the flu shot against Islam. Take your shot. It doesn't hurt you to have some knowledge so you have resistance for diseases do we have any muslim would like to call me by the way today we made a video about having islam i advise everybody to watch it because it's a, it is it is really clarifying what islam is about islam is about sex and nothing but sex all of islam is nothing but sex I advise all of you to watch it if you in case you did not watch it yet <clears throat> you don't believe in the Quran and the hadith okay uh, do we have any Muslim who is a Muslim would like to call me let me let me open my Skype in case we can get some Abdul who they are interested to call give me a second I like Abdul you know they are my favorite I don't know actually what I would do if there's no Abdul in this earth <clears throat> they're wise they're smart they're fast okay let's open Skype <coughs> all right 
right? Skype is going on. And always when I open Skype, I mean, I get notification like, boom. People text me from everywhere. And people think I can read all of this. My friend, it's impossible. Um... <clears throat> Let us see. Okay, now our Skype is open. In case only Muslim, please, you can call me. Don't call me if you are not a Muslim. <coughs> and please, if you say to me in Skype, like, good morning, etc., I did not answer you, I apologize, I cannot answer you. You know, I mean, I will spend the whole day just saying good morning and thank you very much for everybody. Um, somebody saying to me here there's a guy his name is Ostaz Jamui uh, I don't know where this guy from he want to debate me let me see who is this guy I'm going to search he said Wednesday Wednesday but today, okay, we were we were online when it's then he did not where he was. Maybe next Wednesday. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe next Wednesday. <clears throat> Ustaz. Uh, maybe this guy is a Filipino guy or something like this. <clears throat> ah, here we go. Look like I don't know. Maybe I don't know Nigeria. Dawa Society Intel. Okay. This is the guy. Okay, my friend, please invite him. Please, I cannot wait. Let him call me. I have a special invitation for you, Mr. Ustaz. And he called him Ustaz. Ustaz means master. <laughs> I think this guy, he thinks like he is a karate master. Ustaz Jamui Adagua. You are invited, my friend, to speak to... Student, not Ustaz. Ustaz is a master. You are a master. I am just a student. To speak to me, please. I will be happy to hear you, and uh, you, are, you, you are welcome to be our guest. Ustaz. I want to be Ustaz one day, but it's hard to get to be Ustaz. I want to be Ustaz like the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. Look, he is Ustaz in sperm, and what make the baby look like a father or, a, or the mother. I want to be like that, but pff, it's not working. I tried. I tried hard. I could not get this knowledge. It's beyond my ability. I was wondering what make the baby look like the father, what make the baby look like the father. In the beginning, I thought it's the food they eat before sex. And then it doesn't work. I asked my dad what he had before he had sex with my mother. He said, I ate hummus. And I assure you, I don't look like hummus. So it cannot be really that reason. But then I came to this knowledge where the prophet, he explained it with extreme knowledge. It who come first. It's not the hummus you eat. Unbelievable. Look at this. It's astonishing. Who can beat this knowledge? I mean, think about it. I don't know if you if you did not convert to Islam until now, you you better consider. Hmm? He's in Malaysia. Malaysia, okay. Who is in Malaysia? This guy. This guy from Malaysia. I don't know. He looked like from Nigeria. <clears throat> All right. Let us see here. Let me call you, and next time I will destroy you. Sound uh, this guy, this guy, he is saying he will destroy you. Yes. Uh, Let me call you and I will destroy you. Okay.
too many. I'm trying to find who is a Muslim, so maybe we can get some Muslims to call. <coughs> All the names they are saying to me, who want to call you, not even one of them is online. <coughs> Thanks to you, you opened my eye. That's wonderful. Okay. Do we have any Abdul want to call us? Yeah, I noticed that people from Nigeria, they are suffering badly from Islam. And even those who defend Islam, they have no idea what Islam is about. Actually, I encourage you, if you are from Nigeria, to challenge all the Nigerian who claim to be scholars, not the kids like, you know, this Adam Bakri. I mean, you see, sometimes uh, David Wood and Sam Shamoon, they make me upset. I mean, a kid who do not know anything, you put his text in the screen and you promote his channel. I mean, this is just a kid. You see, they do favor to Muslims. Muslims, they come to you to make them famous. The same as they did to Hijab. Hijab is no one. Nobody knows him. Because of you, he became famous now. So why are doing the same mistake? At least when you debate, debate a scholar. You see, for me, I take everybody, because this is like a school. I'm not debating, really. I'm spanking. I take the Muslim. I change his diaper, life on air. I put some powder. I put it back again. And I give him a spank and I send him home. I don't debate Muslims. This is not a debate. This is why everybody is welcome. Old, knowledgeable, not knowledgeable. I don't care. I don't even ask you who are you. Because this is not the purpose. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Surat Yasin. <clears throat> Should I answer you, me, or Allah answer you? <coughs> According to Allah, Allah knows best. <laughs> Let me show you, Yasin. <clears throat> I mean, the stupidity of this cult is beyond imagination. Yasin. I mean, why you remind me? Why? Why? I hate you. <laughs> if we go to chapter Yasin in the Quran, you will see the following. Yasin, and look the interpretation of the Quran. This is Tafsir al Jalalain. This is what Tafsir al Jalalain. Tafsir means interpretation. Have you ever heard of religion have interpretation saying nobody knows what this means? I mean, thank you for the interpretation, man. Finally, we get the answer. Nobody knows what this means. If this is the interpretation, so what it was before the interpretation. <coughs> now there's somebody tried to call me call me only if you are a Muslim you don't call me if you are not please oh here we go this guy he says a Muslim all right <coughs> I'm trying to call more call you Abdul Billo mm -hmm. Call me, but you are not online. It says you are offline. How you text me just now? <coughs> Call me. You will see here it says, Yeah, sin. Yeah, sin. Some education is good. Are you ready for education? Yeah, in the old Akkadian and Aramaic language, is a word mean. God yeah so you add it before anything to make it God yeah sin sin is the name of God you can search right now and you will find that sin is the moon God it's just another name for the moon God so God sin now this is make sense correct do that make sense sin is the moon god you do not need to be a genius go right now and type in google sin the moon god 
are not making things up this is how it is <clears throat> Now, sin uh, is used today in English, actually. Uh, maybe some people do not know even know like where the word sin is coming from. You know, I mean, but sin. Sin simply, when people, they uh, move from cult out to believe in something better, which is, uh, as an example, Christianity. So, <clears throat> uh when when the people in uh, uh, Mr. Ponia, or let us say the Assyrian, the the Babylon people, the ancient ones, they moved from that cult or believe in the moon god. They call that thing sin. The anything which is false, we call it sin. Any wrong, we call it sin. Sin does not mean it's bad, it's mean it's pagan. It's coming from the old pagan religion, which is the moon god in this case. So you will see here the nana and so on and sin. It's just additional names for the same god. You know, okay, depend on the location, they have different name for him, but it's the same thing. All right. So those names we see them appearing in the Quran, and the Muslims they are confused what this is mean. That's why they say Allah knows best. <clears throat> All right. No, simply, yeah, is the word mean God? You know, word mean God. And uh, uh, whatever you add after it is going to be the same as Allah. Al Allah. We we explained that before many time. The word Allah, it is not Allah as many people think. It is let us type in Arabic first. It is Allah. Now we switch to English. Allah contain two words. Al and La. Al is the same as Ya, is a word meaning God. La is exactly sin, the moon God. It's just another name. Every every location, every culture have, they, you know, those, those religions, they move from place to place with the trade, with the occupation, with the armies, but, and they give them a local name based on the language they are using. But la is the same as sin, and sin is the same as la. You know? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim here would like to call us? Il, il is a new version of the word al. You see, il, this is the new Hebrew, or let us say the new Aramaic. Il. So before it was not Il, before it was Al. So Israel was Israel. Mikael was Mikael. Jibriel was Jibriel. Hmm? So Il is just a new, the new language, the new, uh, 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 let us say, uh, the new word God, Il. But it was Al always. So this is why you can say, you know, Emmanuel or Emmanuel. Like until now, we say in Arabic, which is name is not really an Arabic name, Prophet Daniel. Daniel. Why? Because Daniel is two words, and the last one means God. All right? <clears throat> Look like we have a Muslim. He's asking me to call him. Let us see. Uh, are you a Muslim?
All right. So are you a Muslim or not? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let us call this guy. He is a Muslim. <coughs> Hello? I cannot hear you, my friend. Can you speak louder? I said, you're going to debate me. But you need to speak louder in order to understand what you are saying. What do you mean speak louder? Can't you hear me? It's very down. Your voice is very down. Uh, hold on a second. Give me a second, yes. <coughs> Can you hear me? I hear you, but it's not really clear. I mean, it's very down. Can't you make it louder? No, no, no. No? Oh, come on. Can you, you can go you can go to Skype click at the Skype at the top and then go to preference go to audio setting and try to increase the volume of your microphone please All right. <coughs> Well, my friend, I don't know, we cannot talk to you this way because I hardly, I can hear you and people in the text, they are saying we cannot hear you. Uh, I'll hang up and I'll put you back there. All right, no problem. <coughs> so, uh, you know, this is why actually, if you ask the Muslims, as an example, uh, the Quran speak about names. If we ask the Muslims who are they, what their names mean, they don't know. Jibreel, who is Jibreel? What Jibreel mean? They don't know. But Jibreel is is not a one word. It is a sentence, actually. It's not just a name. Same as Israel, same as Mikael, same as Abraham, uh, same as uh, Ishmael. I mean, they have names, but they have no idea what they are. Simply because this is a religion is stealing names from other religion. <coughs> If you ask the Muslims, what does Israel mean? And who is Israel? Not a single Muslim knows. <laughs> but this is mentioned in the Quran almost 40 times. And yet you do not know what Israel means? No, they don't know. Because this is a story in word from different religion. And they do not know what it means. And if we ask them who is Israel, he keeps saying the children of Israel. Where in the Quran we can find? Who is this guy and who are the children of Israel? They say to you, the children of Israel is the Jews. Okay, who is Israel? Not a single place in the Quran says who is this person. <clears throat> and here that is shown us that Islam is nothing but aftermarket copy, which is a false religion. What kind of a prophet he cannot explain to us what he's talking about and what kind of God he said to us we made this book is so clear to the point we say is in the interpretation Allah knows best why we are reaching the point to say Allah knows best in a book the Quran itself says we made the Quran with the clear details so it is a clear to the point nobody knows what it, it does mean do you see how clear it is <coughs> I hope this Muslim will uh, fix his mic. Give me a second. I want to get some water. I'm coughing. Hold on, please.
All right. Okay, we are back. Sorry for that. Uh, let us see if this uh, gentleman he fixes his microphone. Let us give him a call. <laughs> All right, let's try now. Speak, please. Hello. Well, it's it's better, maybe, but it's still down. Okay, but can you speak louder? Let's try to speak louder and let us hear you. What do you want to say to us, my friend? I don't know. You tell me. We're trying to debate about. Well, you are a Muslim, right? Yes. What does that mean? What do you mean what does it mean? It's just, I'm a Muslim, isn't it? What does that mean to be a Muslim? Um, to believe in Allah and the Messenger. To be to believe in Allah. Who is Allah? Um, our God. Who I know that he is your God, but who is Allah? Our God. I know that he is your God, my friend. I'm not asking you who is your God. I'm asking you if I ask you who is your God, you say Allah. I'm asking you who is Allah. Well, it's like you believe in Jesus, we believe in Allah, isn't it? So um, yeah. Yeah, but do you know who is Allah? No, I've never seen him. Have you? Um, okay, but so how you know that okay, you worship someone, you his name is Allah, but you do not know him. Of course, I don't. Do you know Jesus? Have you seen him before? No, but Jesus is a real person, isn't he? <coughs> I mean, yeah, but have you seen him? How do you know? Um, how can you believe in something? Even you have well, there is a the, the, you know, thousand and thousand of people witness him, and even historian wrote about him that they, 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 they exist in his time. But Allah, nobody heard of him, and he, yeah, but what if, even right. your prophet, your prophet, he never saw Allah. Did he see Allah? No, but did you see the father? Did you, um, I mean, you, okay, did you see no, the I saw that. Yeah, I saw the father because Jesus, he said, Whoever saw me, he saw the father. And the disciples of Jesus, they were there and they said to him, Show us the father. He said, Well, I am with you all this time. You do not know me. Now, you're a prophet. He never spoke to Allah. He never heard Allah. Allah never come to him, but yet he is teaching us about well, Allah. So, who's well, Allah? Well, it is for the um, angel Gabriel, didn't he? How we know that Gabriel is, uh, is real? Well, yeah, the, oh. But the Quran says so. So no, if you you see my friend, uh, I I want you first to to take into consideration. I'm not trying to insult you. We mention things for a reason. You're a prophet, according to you Muslims, that your prophet was a man who uh, who was bewitched. Do you agree with that? I don't. So here we go. So you are saying to me your prophet is lying, because your prophet is the one who mentioned that he was bewitched. So as long your prophet is a person who was bewitched, and even he imagined. That things happening in fact they never happened then how we can trust him that he was seeing Jibreel as you see the hate in front of you and this is an authentic story mentioned by the family of Muhammad his wife Aisha that the Prophet once the Prophet was bewitched so that he began to imagine that he had done a thing but in fact he did not so a person who have let us say you are a person applying for a job and you have a med medical file it says that this person he hear voices and he imagine things happening but in fact they never happen they will not give you the job don't you agree can you show me the evidence for that what it's, does it say that it's in the screen my friend i'm showing right, it on the me, screen okay let me see the screen <clears throat> what i can see is that um god knows best what he means by this letter. oh maybe uh, maybe you need to refresh your pay uh, it's going to maybe take time it's okay refresh your page in YouTube just to be right. sure you mute your too please oh I can see now okay okay let okay me, let me read Can you, me, can you show me the reference to that? Sure, sure. Here we go. Let us see. We click at the reference. This is Sahih al Bukhari. And this is the number. So now, how we can trust Muhammad to be seeing Jibreel, the guy you call him Jibreel? Maybe this guy he's imagining. Well, um, there are many um, miracles that Muhammad did in it. So, for like example, what? like what? How, he was illiterate. So, how can he? How can someone illiterate write a book like that? But this, mean, this book is a crazy book. What are you talking about? It's full of uh, mad, crazy stuff. Well, well, that's what, that's your opinion. No, my not my opinion. You choose from me one thing in this Quran. You said you said miracle. Show me one one thing there is right. 
So how can um, how can Muhammad like he's a literate person? How can he write something like that? My friend, first of all, your prophet he never wrote anything. According to Muslims, the one who collected the Quran, it was a guy. His name was Uthman, and yet we don't have the book of Uthman. We have according to according to according to a guy. His name is Hafs, and Hafs was accused by the Muslim that he's a fraud and he was a thief. And I can show you the reference. So when you say to me a prophet who wrote this book, you don't even have a book. Secondly, name for me one thing in the Quran is accurate, is not an error, and is not crazy. Give me an example of the miracles you mentioned. Well, like you say, like a book, like this book. The what? fingertips. The fingertips. Fingertips were in the Quran. Speak fingertip. This is a lie. Nobody says you, fingertips. What do you mean it's a lie? Fingertips about what? Fingertips about cutting fingertips, right? No. What about then? What about what? What do you mean? How 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 could how could he know um, years ago about the fingertips? What what the fingertips? Fingertips is a is a word in the language. It's not a big deal. Maybe you maybe you mean fingerprint. Oh yeah, fingerprint. Sorry, my bad. Ah, fingerprint, my friend. This is a big fat lie. There's nowhere in the Quran it says that Muhammad he speak about uh, uh, you know uh, fingerprint. Can you give me the verse so we can love together? Yeah, sure. Give me a second. Mm, go ahead. <clears throat> Um, okay. um, 70, 75 verse four. chapter 75 verse 4 of the Quran that's wonderful I want you to see and look with me in the screen and don't laugh where in here speak about fingerprints I this one this one doesn't say it doesn't say it says no so we banana who which mean we put his bones together there's no mentioning of skin at all we put the bones of even the fingers together where is the fingertips where is it? sorry i mean the fingerprint it's a lie the muslim my friend with my respect to you they lie to each other and they fool people they make up stories it's not there where is where it says this uh, fingerprint where is that it says bala which means yes we are able to put the human being together even his fingers uh, bones which is very small we can put them together there's no fingerprint there's no skin there's nothing so where they where, where they at they add all this uh, fingertips story to the story it's a lie and this is why I actually I believe Islam is a satanic religion because if Islam is not satanic why those who follow Islam they lie and fabricate stories to make me believe in Islam I assure you that the one who made up this story, he knew that this verse doesn't say that. Well, that's what I've been told. I see, my friend, I'm not saying you are a liar, my friend. I'm saying the one who told you that is a liar. And you can see that in front of you. Do you agree? Um, Give me something yes. else. Give me something else. Forget about this one. <clears throat> was, was, was Muhammad not illiterate? Okay, let us talk about Muhammad being illiterate. First of all, if Muhammad is illiterate, there is a story in the hadith says that when the angel came to him, he said to him, read, correct? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you, my friend. I don't know you with my respect to you. Uh, remember, I'm not trying to insult you. You do not know to, how to read. And suppose that I'm an angel, which means I know that you don't know how to read, right? And God mm -hmm. is the one who sent me. And then I said to you, read. I mean, who is the stupid here? Well, he didn't mean read as in um, the literal sense, as in mm. read. What he meant then? Um, Maybe he meant in a different way. Like what? Give me a give me an example. When I say read, read is read. Arabic is Arabic. I know what read means. Read, which means he say. Maybe he meant. I don't know. Maybe he meant recite instead of. Read. That, that would be even more stupid because how you say I cannot recite. You just did by saying that word. You just did say the word. Imagine I say to you, say zucchini, and you say I cannot say zucchini. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um. So where does he say that first of all? Huh? Where, where does he say that? Where does he say he said read and um, he, he wasn't able to read? 
Well, the, according to the Muslim, the angel, he said to Muhammad, read, and he said, uh, 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 I cannot read. So here, there is a there is a there is a bad error here, because if this is a story as the Muslim tried to present it to us, that means Muhammad, he been ordered from his God wrongly to read, and his God do not know that he do not know how to read, and Muhammad was correcting him, saying to him, come on, I do not know how to read. They okay, so you're saying that. Okay, so basically you're saying that he was alive, and in fact he did actually know how to read. I, um, I am not right. saying anything. I'm just questioning what you just told me. You know, you are the one who mentioned to me how he cannot read, but this story does not make sense. So, secondly, if you go in the Quran, my friend, you will see that the Quran speak about Muhammad being illiterate, and illiteracy in the Quran is not about him knowing how to write, how to read. The Quran, and I think you know because you are a Muslim, it says that we are the Christians and the Jews. We are the people of the book. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Why we are not called illiterate? We are called people of the book because simply we know the book, which means we know God. Those who they are not from the Christians and the Jews, they are called Ummiyin. Read with me chapter 2, verse number 78. I hope the screen is coming good for you. Do you see it? <clears throat> yeah, but I, can't, I, can't, I, don't, I don't know how to read Arabic. That's the thing. No, no, I'm showing it to you in English now. All right, cool. Yeah, I think so. I think so. All right, so what's the problem? The problem is you just told me that Muhammad did not know how to read. But nowhere in the Quran it says that Muhammad do not know how to read. It says that they, there is two kinds of people. There are people who they are illiterate, and there is people who have a book, which means the Quran make it clear that the one who is called illiterate is the one who don't have book of God. Those who have a book of God are called people of the book. And this is what the Quran speak of. And the ignorant Muslims, they think that this is about illiteracy, about not the body, Nobody knows except the Christian and the Jews. They knew how to write and to read. <laughs> this would be funny. In the whole world, there's nobody knows how to write, how to read, except the Christian and the Jews. It's like we are burned to be duck. And we right away, we walk like a duck and we swim like a duck. That would be funny, right? So the Quran, trying to copy the Jews from the Old Testament, speaking about the Gentile who they are illiterate, illiterate about God. They are pagan. So the Quran confirmed that there's two kinds of people, people who they are illiterate about God, and there's people who they have a book. Did you get it? Yeah, all right. So you're saying you're talking about illiterate in the sense of not having the book, right? Not, yes, not having a book, and you don't have the true religion, you know? So they are you are illiterate, and that makes sense, correct? Well, my father's been um, been telling me that, you know, um, that's the, one of the miracles because, you know, he was illiterate, so how can he, um, you know, say, um, right? I mean, he, they basically say, um, you know, no one was able to write a book like him. I mean, no one I mean, I mean my friend, this book is the most... I, 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 please don't think I'm trying to insult you. This is the most right. stupid book ever I read. So when you keep saying to me how he can write this book, how he can write this book, Muhammad, he did not write a book. This is a bunch of collection of stupid stories that don't make sense. Have you, like, as an example, did you read the chapter 18 in the Quran? Yes. Okay. Okay. Isn't it? Is is that something? Somebody he have any little brain will will say that the sun set in the murky water. Well, you were talking about um Alexander the Great, wasn't it? Yeah, he's talking about Alexander the Great. Absolutely. Okay. So Alexander the Great suddenly he became a messenger of Allah, but Alexander the Great he is a homosexual and he is a bisexual. He's not, he's not saying that, is it? It is because if you go and read the interpretation, you will see that this is the person they call him the man with the two horn. This is a story written by a Syrian writer, a fictional story about a true person, which is Alexander the Great. And they called him the man with the two horn. Why? Because when he go in war, he wear a hat, have two horn. But according to Muslims, and this is their explanation, uh, they say that he was called such a name because when he invited his people to Islam, his people did beat him with the hammer in his head like boing and then he got the first horn and then after that Allah he raised him from death and he sent him again to his people and then when he came to his people they you know he said to them again convert to Islam and they did beat him again with the hammer in his head boing and he got the second horn 
and this is why he was called Zulkarnain, which means the man with the two horn. Otherwise, it's going to be funny to call somebody a guy with a two horn. Why is a cow? Well, it probably wasn't mean in the literal sense. Um, no, it's mean. In... No, it's mean Zul Qurnain. The man Zu Zu in Arabic Zul, which means the one with Qurnain, which means two horn. As simple as that. And look here, Allah is talking supposedly. They asked thee concerning Zul Qurnain. Say, I will rehearse to you something of his story. So the one is telling us the story is Allah. But then the story is really crazy. He says that verily we establish his power on the earth, speaking about the king who controlled all the earth and gave him all the way in the me and the means to the end. And then it says, On such he a way he followed until he reached the sitting sun of the sun and he found it sitting in a spring of murky water. <laughs> this is God talking. This is the miracle you are talking about the sun sitting in murky water. Probably um, it was meant to be said in a, in a different way. I don't know. No, my friend, it says it clearly. Sitting, I, I know the Muslim. They try to make it appear to be something, but Muhammad, your prophet, he cannot get himself uh, mute, so he get himself busted. So Muhammad, in the in the hadith, he explained this verse, and he said, uh, "Let's see. You see the hadith with me." Yes, I do. Okay, so it says, "I was sitting behind Allah Messenger, the Messenger of Allah, uh, S A W S, uh, who, who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting, and he asked, do you know where this set?' I replied, "Allah and His messengers knows best, which means this is the knowledge of Allah, because Muhammad is not speaking of his own. He said, "It's set in a spring of warm water." Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. By the way, I used to live there. I mean, I always used to see the sun sitting in murky water. It was the dish where my grandmother washed the, the clothes. I mean, this is obvious. This is a lie. And this is going to be something to be proud about. Yeah, that's a bit funny, to be honest. Thank you very much. I can tell that this gentleman is a nice person. And he have a patient, by the way, because I'm being very sarcastic, but he is not getting upset. I respect that of him. But my friend, you as a person coming from a good family, and you have a brain, and I can tell you, you know, you have a level of education. Do you want to accept such a thing to be follow? And they told you Muhammad is amazing, and Quran, how you can write the Quran. The Quran is the most stupid book ever I saw. Well, to be honest, I believe what my parents have been um, teaching me, um, telling me, so... Um, yeah, to be honest, we haven't read the whole Quran, um, so yeah. So, are you willing to leave Islam, my friend? Um, well, um, okay, you know, don't, don't leave Islam yet. Let us give you more chance. Let us say, let us see if maybe there is something left is good in this religion. Give me something else, give me an example. Forget about this. Oh, did you hear about the flying carpet as an example in the Quran? The the flying carpet. Yeah, the same chapter speaking about <laughs> you did not hear about Wait. the flying carpet. No, I've never heard of <laughs> such a thing. Can, can you show me where he says that? Okay, if we go in the Quran, it says that Allah He gave His prophet Sulaiman the power to control of his flying carpet. So the flying carpet. That he ordered. He ordered. Uh, uh, wait, is this from the wait? Is this from the Quran or where? Oh, where this is the Quran. This is the Quran. Chapter twenty-one, verse number eighty-one. Okay, let me chapter, write this down. Chapter eighty-one, chapter twenty-one, verse number eighty-one. And okay. I will show you the interpretation, so you will not say I'm making things up. You know, uh, did, did you hear about Ibn Kathir before? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that much. I'm. I just do basically what I've been told and things. So okay. um, I'm not. I'm not really. Okay, let us read the interpretation of the story. So you will not say I'm making things up. If we go in chapter twenty-one, verse number eighty-one. Here we go. This is the official government of the kingdom of Jordan. This is government website.
Okay. This is Tafsir al Jalalain. Al Jalalain is a big, well known scholar in Islam, and he has explained the verse. And we disposed for Suleiman the wind to blow strongly. In other verse, it describes it as uh, uh, to blow softly. Okay. In other words, it's either blowing violently, gently, respectively, according to what Suleiman wanted. So it's up to him, he ordered the wind, making its way at his command. To the land which he, we have blessed, namely Syria, and we have knowledge of all things. Let's show you more interpretation. Okay. And also, we made a command to the etc. Actually, here it doesn't show really much. Let me show you Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir give more details. Let us go to Ibn Kathir. All of those are Islamic website, 100%. And by the way, Islamic translation is a fabricated translation, which means they never give a true, honest translation. So I always advise you not to trust what they say, even though well, I've heard about, I've heard about um, chapter 33, verse 56, where um, it says that um, Allah sends blessing or the, um, that sort of thing. Allah, he said what? Um, I, you know, you know um, Surah 33, verse 56? What about it? After the debate about whether um, I like praise or um, yeah, you know. we will go there. But let us let us let us see here first. Let us finish this one. So to show you the flying carpet, because we mention it, I don't like to mention something without. Uh, read with me. Is the screen coming? Yeah, it is coming. Okay, and to Suleiman, we subjugated the wind strongly. Ragging means we subjugated strong wind to Suleiman. Okay, now he said, he had a mate. Or mat, sorry, made of wood in which would place all the equipment of his kingship horses, camels, tents, and troops. Then he would command the wind to carry it, and he would go uh, 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 underneath it and it would carry him aloft, shading him and protecting him from the heat until he reached whenever he wanted to go of the land. All right, so the business is for the carpet, isn't it? Sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't see the word carpet there. It says mat. mat. Do you see the mat? You see the mat? Oh yeah, yeah, mat, mat. yeah. So the wind go under the mat and carry it. And what he have in the mat? He have his equipment, his army. It's not a flying carpet like Alibaba carry only one or two, you know, or something bad. It carry the whole kingdom. His, his, actually in the in the Arabic it says the carpet can fit for six hundred thousand chairs. Plus all the tents, plus all the soldiers, plus all the camels, plus all the horses, plus all the food, plus all the animals, all are flying in one mat, and they fly from the, in a distance of one month in each blow. Wait, wait, where would you get these um, interpretations from? This is a Kathir, my friend. I can send you a link if you wish. Um, yes, please. I will. I will. I will give it to you in Skype later. When we finish, you can click on it and you can read. And um, again, and again, by the way, the English translation is full of lies. You want to laugh more? Read the Arabic one. The Arabic one is more hilarious. In English, they try always to cover the madness and stupidity, you know. And in the same, here we go. It says, "Its morning was a month journey, and its afternoon was a month," which means journey. And not only that. Suleiman, Allah, he gave him the power of, uh, of uh, uh, to control shayateen. And what the shayateen they do? They die for him to bring him rubies, to bring him diamonds from the ocean. I mean, this guy, he is in control of everything. You know, he don't, uh, this is why he was very rich. And then it says, and also of shaitan, every kind of builder. Here we go. He have a shaitan who is engineer in building. And they built for him synagogue. And not only that, they build for him statues and icons and palaces. Shaitan, he don't hire a construction a construction company. He have the shaitan himself building for him. Shaitan and his family, all of them, they work for him. You know? And then the one who disobey him uh, or he don't he don't have work, uh, Suleiman, he he put chains on them. You know, he sh he chained them. Well, what about... Okay, so you can say... 
that in fact Muhammad was wasn't actually illiterate and the miracles, for example, the miracle um the uh, fingerprints and um, splitting the moon and so on, so forth. So it's a lie, my it. friend. There's nothing. There's nothing like this. The the splitting the moon, even if the the one splitting the moon is a proven Muhammad to be a false prophet. Why? Because that word doesn't even say that Allah did miracle. Or what the verse saying that the moon is split and judgment day is near. It doesn't say Allah split anything. Or what it says that this is a sign of judgment day, but the moon never split. Never, because if the moon is split for one second, the 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 the, the uh, uh, not only the moon will be destroyed, the earth will be destroyed because the moon will hit the earth, and at least the part facing the earth. And here, Muhammad he he, he made a mistake by saying that the moon is split and the night, the judgment day is very near, because this is what's happened fourteen hundred years, and by saying that the moon is split and the judgment day is near, you confirm that the judgment day started because the split of the moon is a sign of the judgment day. But this was 1400 years ago, proving Muhammad to be a false prophet again. And there's no more right. split. You know, the Muslim, they post a picture of uh, the moon, uh, of a valley. They say, this is from NASA, this is the moon split. This is a, this is a valley. We have, the, we have the Grand Canyon, the biggest valley ever you can imagine. But this is not, doesn't mean the earth is split. So you're telling me that basically all those miracles are basically lies. My friend, my, there's no miracle. Even the Quran says, the Quran itself says that Allah He never gave Muhammad a miracle. Wama manana and he read with me. Let me show you. All of judgment is. Chapter 17, verse number 59. Read read please for me what it says. Can't see it. <coughs> You see it now? Or oh, 59, did you say? Yeah, this is chapter 17, verse number 59. The one is highlighted with the green. Okay, um, and we refrain from sending the signs only because the men of former generation treated them and forced sent the sheikh coming to the okay. oh, So Allah he refrained from sending miracles. He refrained. The Quran says he refrained. So how the Muslims they say there's miracles and the Quran itself saying is a refrain. Well, even well, Jesus didn't did, it, did it not say the same. Um, he was um, and he said, I, I can't do any miracles uh, when he was in um, Jerusalem. I think it was my friend Jesus. He all his life is doing miracles. He is a miracle himself. He is born of a virgin. He, according to Islam, he spoke in the cradle. He did not wait forty years to until like Muhammad to be squeezed and somebody says to him, "Read." From the first second he's born, he speak the wisdom of God, and he is born of a virgin, which means he himself is a miracle. Before he is exist, his name is the Messiah. He is the word of God, and it's confirmed in the Quran. So, no, but what I'm trying to say is that maybe um, he refrained himself the same way Jesus did when he was in Jerusalem. My friend Muhammad, he never did any miracle. What was refrain? Or it says, it says Allah. It's not Muhammad. Allah is saying we refrain from sending miracles. And by the way, this is a lie, because as you know, the Christians believe that Jesus did miracle, correct? Yes. Okay, and the Jews believe that prophets they did miracle, correct? Yes. Okay, so what is the excuse that former generation they believe did not believe in them? This is a lie. They believe in them. So Muhammad, because he cannot have a miracle, he claimed that his God is not sending miracles because, okay, well, here we go. There's a prophet before came and they have miracles. You do not believe in them, but this is a lie. So what, 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 well, Muhammad killed the sick as well, didn't he? Did he not heal um, his cousin Ali when he was um, inflicted with an eye um, infection? I don't understand what? I said, well, um, I said Muhammad um, killed the sick as well, did he not? I think the Quran, the Quran says that he treated his cousin Ali when he was inflicted with an eye infection. No, I know, I know, this is not uh, not true. This is a, uh, all of this. Muhammad himself, his children, they die. According to Muslim, he could not help them. Muhammad himself, he got sick. As I just showed you, Muhammad himself was bewitched. Even Muhammad, he cannot even have a real sex. According to the hadith of his wives, that Muhammad, he imagined himself having sex, but in fact, he never did. So how the man who himself obviously is suffering from issues, mental issues, he can help you. The prophet continued for such and such a period imagining that he had slept, had sexual relationship with his wives, but in fact he did not. This is how bad the situation of Muhammad is. If you go to a doctor and you tell him, I imagine myself, that I was having sex. I'm not talking about somebody he sleep and he dream. No, that's not the case. 
Muhammad is awake during daytime and he think he did things but in fact he did not including sex so how this man can be a prophet of God we cannot even hire him to be a post office man because he would imagine that he delivered the mail to you but in fact he did not <laughs> you know what I mean yeah that's a bit odd. so how we can trust this guy he, he, okay he might see in the same day he see Jibreel he said Jibreel told me this but in fact he did not see Jibreel this guy is imagining you can go and study a little bit of science and you will you will find out that this person is suffering from mental illness there's a chemical chemical balance in his brain he imagined things he hear voices even Muhammad he said the stones say hello to him have you ever heard why the stone will say salam alaikum trees they say to him as salam alaikum the cow said to him as salam alaikum the camel spoke to him the, the stone spoke to him but nobody hear it only him he can hear it and here we go even his sex have no witnesses have you ever heard of somebody have, have sex but he have no witness even the wife she never heard of him doing sex what what, what does he say that it's in the front of you because here it says that he imagined that's mean the Muhammad he did not have sex for read if I say you know what, what what happened here Muhammad was bragging about himself having sex around between his friends and they're telling me that he is a savage person then they asked the wives the hadith, right the hadith in the front of you didn't see don't you see it is the hadith right it's in the front of you, yeah. All right. Well, can you give me the reference to that, please? Okay, no problem. Here we go. Thanks. So, you still you are holding to Islam, my friend, or you decide to leave Islam? Um. Do you want to have a bewitched prophet who is even his sex is false? I need to study this, to be honest, because um, I've never heard of this um, before. All, all I've heard is that you know Muhammad was a really good person. Things like what that. is good about him? What is good about him? Having sex with a child, she is six years old. Well, it was six years old, but back then, six years old was different than. My friend, married, my friend, it? this is a big fat lie. With my respect to you, I am an Arab. I am from there. I never heard of somebody thinking of six years old girl. Even dogs don't do that. Even animals, they sniff, they sniff the the female. If she have a heat, if she have her period, then they go for it. But they don't go after a baby dog. Even dogs don't do that. So. This is a prophet of God. He is 54 years old. She is six years old. And he have wives already. He is, he's married. What make him think even about a child unless he is sick? They lie to you to say six years old at that time. Six years at that time. Why? I mean, here we go. It's like 19, wasn't it? Today, basically. That's so, what sorry? Six years old uh, back then was like 19 today. No, my friend. 16 is six, is six years. Is six years. What 19? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but the way they used to count the years before you... Um, used to be different than it is now. My friend, it's not far, not far long ago. We are not talking about ten million years to say maybe this has happened before. It's just fourteen hundred years ago. What are you talking about? Like, come on, you are smarter than this. Well, but they had, wait, but they had, well, they had sex at nine when they when they go married, basically. No, no, so, uh, no problem. But, but but from six to nine, he was molesting her. She's his wife. Why are you many marry? Did did she became a wife at the age of six? Yes. So he have intercourse with her at the age of nine, because if he do it before, he obviously she cannot handle it. She would die. Maybe he was trying, but he noticed she cannot do it. We don't know what happened inside the bedroom. She has. Why didn't anyone stop him then? Huh? Why didn't anyone stop him? Who can stop him? Muhammad is a criminal. Who can stop Muhammad? And also, I've got another question. Go ahead. Uh, is it true that he died of um, natural death? No, Muhammad, he died by poison. What do you mean by poison? Yeah, a Jewish woman, she killed him. I've never heard that before in my life. I, I... You are talking to Christian Prince, my friend. I am the Wikipedia of Islam. This is Sahir Bukhari in front of you. It must have been telling that he died of a natural death, as in. No, no my normal. friend, no. Here we go. The prophet in his element in which he died used to say, used not only once, not twice. I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my orta is being cut off from that poison. Do you see it? Yes. Okay, so Muhammad was not. As they say to you, he died by poison. And here we have a question. Why Allah did not protect Muhammad from death, but the Muslim, they say Allah protected Jesus from being crucified. Here we go. Muhammad was killed by the Jew, and the Jews, they wanted to kill Jesus. According to the Quran, Allah He protected Jesus. According to the the, the 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 Muslim books, Allah did not protect Muhammad. Why? I don't know. Because this is a crazy religion, my friend. 
but it's not only me. Um, I've got a lot of my friends. That we, um, you know, not not everyone um says the same thing. He died of natural death. So, um, no, no. But yeah. here, but here, you notice that this is crazy because Muhammad in different place. By the way, he's Muhammad is a, is a doctor. Muhammad he speak about uh, medicine. So, uh, uh, Muhammad he said, if you eat seven ajwa, you know what ajwa is? No, ajwa is a palm date. So, if you eat seven ajwa a day. Then no poison will work in you and no magic will work in you. But Muhammad he have both. He was affected by magic and he died by poison. So how the guy is teaching us what to eat so he can stay healthy and he claimed that this is all from Allah. He says such a thing. And then he end he died by poison and he was under the black magic in the same time. Why do you a lot of Muslims today believe that he died of natural death. If that's nobody believe this is a lie. You see, Muslims, most of Muslims are like you. They don't they hear things, but nobody. No. We are people who knows what we are talking about. Talking did I say, thing. my friend? Did I say to you anything until now without showing your reference? No, no, no. See, well, uh, obviously, uh, I need to uh, go and yeah. kind of look at this. No problem. Um, no problem. It's in the front of your screen. This is this is Sunnah that come. This is not my website. This is Muslim. All is a pure Muslim Sunni website. This is not my website. Soon yeah, come. okay so I'm not I'm not making things up so we show it live and as you see whatever you ask me I show you right away in a second doesn't take me even an hour to find it my friend I spend my life studying the stupid religion I advise you right now to leave it you don't want to follow such a madman this is a madman now some things are shocking to be honest um, Let me ask you, well, I don't know what is your education did, like, did you pass high school? Yeah, I've got a bachelor's in economics. That's wonderful. That's that's amazing. That's good. Okay. Do you think if a man have orgasm first, the baby will look like the man, and if the woman have orgasm first, the baby will look like the woman? I don't know about the chromosome X and Y. I don't. No, my friend, it. it's about or orgasm first. Read with me carefully. This is not our chromosome. They will start. I know the most, and they will try to fool you. Say a chromosome. What chromosome? It says the message of Allah said. The man water is thick and white. Is the chromosome thick and white, or this is about the sperm? Uh, this is about the sperm. Okay, sperm. And then the women water is thin and yellow. Muhammad describing the liquid in the women vagina when she have sex. And then he says, whichever of them comes first, the child will resemble the parents. Do you see it? Yes. And this is stupid because it doesn't matter. Even if you say X and Y. Who care about they come first or not? There's there's some people that don't even some there's many women they don't even come but they get pregnant, and the look of the sun, or to be a male or female have nothing to do who come first. This is this is this is a lie. Don't you agree? Yeah, that's kind of silly. <laughs> this is silly and this is stupid. And even the Quran make it even. So, yeah, I agree with you. This is silly and it's stupid. And even the Quran make make it more poopoo and more funny, more stupid. We're in the in chapter 86 verse number seven uh, uh, the, the Quran claim that the man sperm coming from the backbone of the man and the women sperm coming from the ribs of the women which is extremely stupid and madness women they don't have a sperm and <laughs> this would be stupid to believe that the sperm of the man came from the backbone what about the balls then and then to make it more stupid he claimed that the sperm of the women coming from the ribs but women they have no sperm and there is nothing come from the ribs. That's stupid. Still, you want to be a Muslim, my friend? <laughs> Wait, so how come a lot of people don't know this? My friend, nobody knows. As you see, I mean, like, as you see, ask yourself the same question. How come you do not know? You are a Muslim too. So they are the same as you. I, sorry to say so. How come you do not know? But thanks God you came in my way, you know, or let's say I came in your way, and I'm sharing with you. you don't well, I just believe what my parents told me really to be honest. And so, uh, my friend, I invite you right now to leave this cult. What do you say? This is cannot be from God. This is stupid. You are smarter than this, you are an educated person. This is garbage. I agree that some things are kind of old to be honest. Um, but um yeah, I'll need some time to kind of. Why well, you need some time? It's enough for you. Okay, how many how many tons of reference I need to show you that this is stupid? I mean, come on, you're smarter than this. And already you said this is silly. I heard you many times saying this is silly, which means this is stupid. 
Um, it is sci both scientifically and logically. Okay, so how, why you want to believe in such a garbage? Say I am out of this cult. You are smarter than this. Well, even if I do this, um, I won't be able to tell um, my parents. So. No problem, but uh, we are talking now. You, you forget about your parents. Your parents maybe something later, but at least in your, in your heart, you know that you are not a Muslim. So you, did you decide to leave Islam, my friend? Well, I'll have to look at the interpretations of... I'm showing um, you the interpretation. Here we go. It's in the front of you. <laughs> my friend, this is the interpretation. It's just I'm shocked, to be honest. Um, I know you are shocked, and I'm here to help you. And see, and that, you see, I understand your pain. I understand your situation. I understand you are shocked that you thought this is a great religion. Okay. Muhammad is a great prophet. Okay, so what, what about the things that we thought about Jesus? Are they true or are they... No problem. Let us see first. Made up. Or do you did you decide to leave Islam? Um, well, I'm thinking. Okay, everything Muhammad said about Jesus is a lie. The only thing in the uh, the only thing is can be not a, not a lie about Jesus is about let us say uh, Mary, you know. But the rest is a lie. As an example, the Quran did not even quote the name of Jesus correctly. Who is Isa? We do not know who is Isa. The same as the rest. Mary, she is the sister of Aaron. Who is Aaron? Aaron is the brother of Moses. But between Mary, Aaron and Moses, more than a thousand years, how Aaron became the, the, the brother of Mary? Who is the father of Moses, Umran, according to Islam? Who is the father of Mary, Umran? So Mary and Umran and Aaron, they have one brother, one father, but there's thousands of years between them. Well, but the Quran says that how can God, he says that God has no daughters or sons. Sorry? Um, how can God have a son? Even that one is a stupid statement because, you know, uh, uh, if you if you go uh, if we go in the Quran right now, you will see the Quran saying the following. Well, I do understand that you know God can have anything He wants. So um... no problem. But I'm I'm going with the logic of the Muslim, which they taught you as a Muslim. No problem. And by the way, I I really like you. You are you know a person of respect. I respect you because usually Muslims they shout and they make me lose my voice. And they scream and they go in denial, you know, but you don't do that, and I respect that. Uh, when we go in the Quran, the Quran says, How Allah can have a uh, 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 how he Allah he can have a son if you don't have a girlfriend. But here you will notice that the God of Islam he did shoot himself in the in the foot because if Allah cannot have a girlfriend, because he have let us go to the verse, hold on, because he don't have a girlfriend. Then how Mary she can have a son but she don't have a boyfriend? Well, if he wasn't able, well, if he wasn't biologically, then can he be a metaphor? My friend, it's not uh, Mary. She was not biologically too because Mary she don't have a boyfriend. It was not from sex, you know. Yeah. So when you say to me that I I am Allah and I cannot have a son because I don't have a girlfriend, then you need to explain to me how you say to me in different verse. That I am Allah and I made Mary have a boyfriend, a, a son without boyfriend. So you can make Mary have a son without boyfriend, but you cannot make yourself have a son without girlfriend. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it doesn't logically doesn't really make sense. It's, it's, it's a stupid statement. It doesn't make sense. Absolutely. So here we go again. The Quran is making poo poo. That doesn't make sense. In different place, the Quran. Uh, uh, you know, speak about that. If we want to, if we want to have a son, we will take a son from ourselves. Okay, what do you mean from ourselves? Are you one? The Muslim they keep saying to us that Allah is one God, correct? Yes, okay. How Allah will take a son from ourselves if He is the only one? It doesn't make sense. So, uh, uh, if we go in the Quran here, let us see. By the way, your mic is really bad. I advise you to change it. It's giving me a headache, but I'm just being yeah, patient I'm... with you because I'm trying to my best to help you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, but otherwise, it's really giving me a headache in my in my head. Um, okay. I apologize. No problem. It's not your fault. 
In chapter 21, verse number 17, it says, if we wish to take a pastime, and by the way here the word pastime is a woman, the Arabic in Arabic, the word lehu goes for women. So if we want to take a woman for fun, we should surely have taken it from things near us. This is a Muslim translation, but the fact doesn't say that. It says from ourselves, from the dunna. If we go to the interpretation, this is chapter one, 21, verse number 17, and I will show you the Muslim interpretation. So you will see I'm not making things up. You will see here. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I just muted it because I don't want to. Yeah, know. this is Ibn Abbas. No problem, it's okay. This is Ibn Abbas, this is Ajil Alain. You can read whatever interpretation you want. And this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. How do we desire to find a, some diversion that which provide diversion in the way of a partner or a child, which means a woman or a child? We would have found it with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ourselves. From among the beautiful eyed Huris or the angels, Allah will have sex with the Huris. <laughs> what is that? How the Muslim they say to us, Allah is God, Allah is Almighty, Allah is etc. And then Allah He Himself He said to us, if I want to take a woman for fun, and look, even the word He used for women is insulting. He did not even say a wife. He said lahwan lahu, fun mean fun, literally mean fun, which means if I take a woman for fun, which means for sex, we will take it from the beautiful eyed Huris. Now here we have many problems. First of all, he says from ourself, and yet they say to us that Allah is one, but yet it's ourself, and they cannot say this metaphorical because he is talking about taking a partner, which means another individual, right? A woman cannot be himself, otherwise uh, Allah must be male and female in the same time. So, and when you say to me, how I can have a son and then have a girlfriend, that means you are a male. You are confirming to me that you are a male God. And you are saying you don't have a female God, and this is why you don't have a son. And now he is confirming it again. If we want to take Lehu, which is a female, we will take it from who? From the beautiful eyed women. Again, he says clearly that those are women, if we want to take. And now, how the Huri, who they are created for Muslims to have sex with, they will, are fit and they are qualified to have sex with Allah, if Allah is not a man. The Muslims say to you, well, here he's saying, if, it doesn't matter, you know, when I say to you, if, it's mean it's possible, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, if I said, okay, if I want to marry a woman, she have to be, uh, you know, etc. It's mean, it is possible, if I want, this will happen. If it's not impossible, you don't say to me, if I want, I will take from this, because simply, that should be stupid, because the women are not from your kind. It's like saying, have you ever seen, uh, imagine an elephant saying, if I want to have a wife, I will marry an ant. That would be funny. Right? Yeah. Because they are from two different kinds. Do I agree? Yes. Okay. In order for Allah to say, if I want to have a woman for fun, I will take the beautiful eyed Hori, and those are women. Then he admitted and he agreed that he is, must be a man. Because women... They have a private part of a woman, which means women is a word coming from the man. Woo, man. Woo, man, right? So women is as exactly as the man in everything except his the sexual private part. So if we want to take a partner, it's going to be a woman, but the woman is a human being. How she can be your partner? I'm not sure my friend come on you are smarter than this just denounce this cult say I am out of it yes yeah, so what do I do then say it and I will tell you what you would do I'm out I am out hallelujah hallelujah guys did you hear it I am out thank you Lord 
Thank you, Lord, for sending this gentleman who sent me a message in Skype saying I want to debate you. He was challenging me. By the way, you did not lose. You did not lose, my friend. You did not lose. Hold on. You did not lose. You did win. You did not lose. Don't think you lost. You won. I'm just asking. I'm just call to confirm certain things I've been. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just telling them what you said to me in text before you call me. I want to debate you, right? You know. So, my friend, you are welcome. I'm happy for you. Now, you see, you refuse because all of this doesn't make sense to you, and it's stupid. No, it's because I don't know. It's because um. I've never heard of these things before. Everyone's been saying good no things, problem. miracles, um, all sorts of things, you know. Um, and so, yeah. Nope. You know, no one's, no, no one's telling us about these sort of things, which, you know, they're in the hadith and, you know, old sort of sources, um, yeah. which I find it's yeah. basically lying. I understand. But now, my, my friend, friend you, you, you said to me, you said to me what you should do best. You should, should do next, right? Should I tell yeah. you what you do next? Okay. Me as a Christian, I believe that me as a person, I have patience to speak to you, even though your mic is giving me a headache, because my Lord, he taught me to love every human being, including the Muslims. God is love, and I advise you to follow the one who teach you to love everybody, because love can change all mankind, can change you to a different person, can make you happy, can make you healthy. Hate kill you it's like a poison you eat it you are the first one to die with it so yeah. when jesus he said love your enemy bless them those who curse you maybe it sounds like okay i am being nice to others but the fact the first thing i do i am being healthy i am both being healthy in my heart i am being healthy in my mind and i am stress free because when i love everybody around me i have no stress secondly i'm happy number three i trust myself because you know what I don't have enemy yes they hate me they want to kill me but I have no fear I love everybody so I say to you and I invite you in front of everyone to accept the Lord the Messiah as your Savior who said love your enemy the one who resurrect people from the grave the one who said to the blind see and he saw not like Allah who said to Muhammad read and he could not read the one who said to the man he cannot walk walk and the man carry his bed and he walked the one who said for I forgive your sin but don't do sin again that is Jesus, my friend. So I invite you to the King of Kings, the one who have the wisdom which nobody have. I invite you to read the Bible from the first chapter of John all the way, the four Gospels. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. And you will never find something better. So I invite you, my friend, to believe in the best of the best. And that is the Messiah, the Christ, my Lord. What do you say? Well, obviously, first I got to go and um, read the Bible and, you know, see what it's saying and you know look um at the historical jesus and you know just find out things no problem my friend i went i really i wanted from my heart that you would say i believe but uh, for sure we want you to believe from your heart but not by your tongue we are not like muslim who say shahada we don't want you to do that we want you to be a believer but again i remind you that me and you we might go to sleep now and we never wake up and salvation is an opportunity so I invite you for the opportunity of salvation and you think and you read and this is why actually I am the one who told you go read we don't want you to believe blindly we want you yeah. to have faith based on truth not at least fictions. I can understand it no problem I understand and I'm, I'm not saying to you just say I believe you know no I want you to believe I don't want you to say I believe but yet you don't you don't believe but so I'm saying at least I can understand what it's saying compared to the Quran where you know you just rely on translators you know telling the truth of things right yeah and that's why I'm here to help you my friend I'm happy that you called me today I'm happy that you decide to leave Islam I will be happy if you call me anytime soon and say to me I decide to accept Jesus um, yeah of course as in as I embark on this journey obviously I'm gonna um you know certain questions are gonna come to my mind and also yeah, sure, my take... friend. thank you very much for calling me if you feel you change your mind you want to say you accept Jesus just let me let me know and I will be happy to hear it and everybody here will be happy for you we have almost 700 people listening and they will be really happy to hear you that you accept the Messiah and the, the Lord the Lord he said when a lost soul came back to him a happiness will be in the kingdom of heaven which means the whole heaven will be happy for you for accepting the Messiah that's why I me myself I wanted to invite you and I believe the Lord using me to speak in my time to you which means the Messiah himself is speaking right, so to you. 
process. What's the process? For example, if you read the Bible and so on, and then you know you realize what's the truth, um, then what do you do from there? Right. Yeah. Is well, there, uh, don't you have to say anything, or you know, is is there like a formal no, way? No, you see, my friend, you read the Bible, but don't read it as a story. You try. You see, this is what I do since I was a kid. This is why I read differently from what people do. You notice, like me, when I speak to you, I go deep in the words, right? So I analyze the words. So when I read the Bible, I close my eyes and I imagine myself there. Imagine yourself living the story, not hearing a story. So you want to know what Jesus is saying? Live the story and you will enjoy it. And you will notice that each time you read the same story in the Bible, it fit with something happening to you right now in your life. And no matter how many times I read the Bible, each time I read it, I find something there. Now it's happening to me. Even though the Bible is a book written 2,000 years ago, it's not going to be expired because the wisdom of Christ is amazing. So you live the story and you will see that Lord, he will speak to you within that story, even though it is mentioned 2,000 years ago for people who have no electricity, who have no TV, who have no... They have nothing. I mean, it's life is very simple, a cow and, and donkey and etc. Yeah, I've heard one thing. Is it true that Jesus um, uh, prophesied the falling of the temple in Jerusalem or was the... Prophesy the, what? The, the falling of the temple Yes, in yes, yes. He, he, he prophesied that the tem temple will be destroyed and that's what exactly happened. But this is not, not what makes Jesus Jesus. My friend, it's not about Jesus prophesying something and oh, but something if, I'm, if I say I'm someone, then I got to prove it, right? You can't yeah, just yeah, say I'm I know, but I mean, but I mean, I mean, there's tons of things Jesus, he said, they become to be true. But this is not what makes Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is unique. He's not a prophet only. The only prophet, actually, in the whole universe is God himself. Because a prophet of God, he have nothing of his own. He prophesied what God told him, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the real prophet is God. So Jesus is a prophet, but yet he is our Lord. So all the prophecies he said, anything he says is true. Anything he said is going to happen, or it may be happening already. So I am not surprised to see things he said is happening or will they will happen. But there's more than this. There's things which are amazing beyond the imagination. There's something beautiful about him. The Messiah, what? when you believe in him, your life changes. You see, you believe in Muhammad, you will notice many, they go, let us say, they go to jail for a month. They meet with some Muslims, they share his shahada, convert to Islam, and the second day he come out, he want to do jihad. So Islam changed you to be a violent person, a person who goes for violence, and Jesus, he do the opposite. It's in the chapter nine. Sorry? It is it's stated in chapter 9, which I believe is one of the most violent um, no, no, the whole Quran is violent. The whole Quran. Well, but chapter, well, chapter five, this says, is, uh, the actually, the Quran is the Quran does not contain much violence as Muhammad life stories. Muhammad he cut a woman to pieces when she's alive. Her name is Umar Qurfa, more than eight years old. He tied her legs to two camels and he ordered the camels to split her alive. I don't know if you saw the videos of ISIS tying a guy to two tanks and they split him alive. This is not something they come with. This is Muhammad what he did. Muhammad is a very evil man. So it's not just about violence. You see, my friend, sometimes violence can be for a reason. So if somebody kill me and I'm defending myself, okay, that's, you know, you, 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 I mean, this guy is not being bad. He's defending himself. But Muhammad is an evil man. He enjoyed torture. He put nails in the eyes of people. He cut the, you know, like, you, you know, you mentioned to me the, the fingertips, right? You remember? Yeah. Okay. Do you know that the Quran says that you kill people and you cut their fingertips for uh, their fingertips for fun? Why no. you wanna get why you wanna cut the fingertips of somebody? Why you kill the man? The man is already the, the man, the figures, right? read, read with me, chapter chapter eight, verse number twelve. Remember the Lord inspired the angels with the message. I am with you. Give uh, uh, firmness to the believers. I will install terror in the heart of the believers, submit above their necks and submit their fingertips of them why what is the purpose of fingertips okay you want to kill them they are your enemy no problem you give me all the excuses and what after you kill them you want to you want to cut their fingertips yeah it, has, it makes no sense first. so 
obviously it's a false cult based on violence and the violence is the only reason for Islam to stay until now if you give a freedom for people in Pakistan to believe or not to believe you will see people leave Islam you know the, I don't know if you heard of something called the war of apostate you heard of it no okay Muhammad he died everybody almost left Islam what what the Muslims the gang they did the fighter the warriors they launched war it's called the war of apostate you can search it in Google the war of apostate against everyone who left Islam just because they heard Muhammad is dead as simple as that so how come Islam's um, trending so fast no Islam is dying for so fast my friend this is a this is a propaganda it's false Islam is dying very fast as you see we are the Arab we are leaving Islam and we are we are making fun of Islam and you will see people all over the world leaving Islam if you if you if I tell you how many people left Islam after speaking to me you will not believe it so Islam is dying they have a propaganda that Islam is spreading that's not true and they measure themselves by birth rate but this is not a true uh, measurement because who said that everyone is born in a Muslim country is a Muslim give them freedom and let us see who's a Muslim I should know a case um I know a girl from Saudi Arabia who basically she does everything her parents wants her to, but she's an atheist. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard of a country have no gays, have no atheists, have no Christian, have no Jews? I mean, come on. <laughs> Obviously, it's a violence, right? Keeping things in the in order. So the whole country, when Ahmed and Najad, he you know he came to the United Nations, he said, in my country there's no gays. Yeah, because you kill them if somebody says he is. Give them freedom, you will see how many gays they will have. That's actually true to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, a country have no atheist that's funny <laughs> that's a miracle actually <laughs> but why because who dare to say I'm an atheist they will kill him right away with fear my friend everybody worship the same God because nobody dare to say I don't believe in that God take the fear out take the terror of Islam as you see in front of you on the screen terror is what making Islam stand for until now but I believe strongly that the same reason made Islam stand is the same reason will make Islam collapse and now Muslims are leaving Islam left and right because there's many Muslims naive Muslims they thought Islam is a nice religion and they were shocked when they saw Isis but Isis are practicing Islam exactly Isis is Islam and Islam is Isis I challenge anyone to show me one thing Isis did Muhammad did not do not a single thing they are the real Muslims. Yeah, well. Well, my friend, I'm I'm uh, I'm happy that you spoke to me. Okay, I hope okay. I hope next time you will call me with better microphone because I have to apologize from you. Yuri. Can, I get, can I also get some of my friends to call you? Sorry, sorry. Um, can I also get some of my friends to call you? Sure, sure, absolutely. Anytime, my friend. Anytime I am on on. Uh, just text me first because I get too many messages. Okay. And I, I pick up people to call me. I don't know them, but because too many people they text me, as you see, I am open for everybody. And sometimes people they call, they are just being stupid. You know, they call, they make a voice of a goat or etc. So text me. Uh, you'll be amazed how many people um, are in my situation. I met, I met everyday people in your situation. Trust me, it's, it's okay. So, and I'm really happy for you. Actually, don't don't think you you, you lost today. You you are being smart. You are a smart person. I, I didn't win. I didn't call to win anything. Or to lose. I just wanted to no, no. I, I know. I know. But I mean, some people they think, okay, a Christian Prince, he won the debate. No, no, no. I did not win. You are the winner, because I spent my time actually doing nothing. I just repeated what I know. I mean, my knowledge with you. It is you who gain knowledge, right? It is you who heard things never heard before. So you are the only winner in this conversation. Um, I'll be challenging people what you said. I took note of the references. Absolutely. Let people call me, my friend. Bring the best you have who can defend Islam, and tell them I want to hear you defending Islam, speaking to this guy, and you will laugh with me, and you will see they cannot. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks for the help. Yeah. Thank you, my friend, for calling me. May the Lord bless you. And I pray before you go. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes, and He will send you a private invitation to your heart to accept Him, that He is your Lord and your Savior. And really, really, from my heart, I pray to the Lord that He might guide you, bless you, and keep you, and guide you from everything is evil. You accept Him or not, I still I pray for Him to be with you and to protect you, even if you don't accept Him yet. For God is love, and He loves those who love the truth and the good ones. Thank you, my friend, for calling me.
Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Take care. God bless. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm very thankful for my Lord that today I I did uh, open the live podcast that late. Here we go. You know, we we help a person uh, to know the truth, and the truth will set you free. This is Jesus. Said. Hello. Hello, Mr. Priest. How are you, sir? I'm fine, my friend. Um, thank you for the grace of on that uh, young Muslim. Uh, my question is that um, I need your help. All right. And the help that I, I called earlier on, but you online. There's a guy that I debated this afternoon, um, and I've texted you. So, and uh, he put, and I told him I was trying to call you, but you are no more online. Mm -hmm. And he always be online on Wednesday. Okay. So he told me that he's going to be online on Wednesday by 3 p.m. This Wednesday coming. So this coming know. Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, it will be 3, 3 p.m. What time? This is New York, New York time? Yeah, Eastern time. It's going to be Okay, no 3. problem. Okay, well, just confirm with him, please. Confirm with him. And for sure, I will be like, because now uh, we are, we have a week to go, right? Yes, yes. Nice request. Yeah, so, so before before a day before, call me to remind everybody and to remind me, and I will be I will be in on time on air. Just to be confirming okay. that he will be there. We don't want to go because sometimes as you see, I go at different time and trying trying to reach uh, as many from different locations because you know, like uh, sometime we do it 3 a.m. 3 p.m. and here, which is going to be like 3 a.m. in the morning in Indonesia, right? So I try to be fair and try to share our school here with everybody around the world so sometimes we open usa time sometimes we open earlier with fit with etc so just confirm to me and i will be happy to take this person and tell him so to get, and tell him to get ready tell him to bring his yeah, god with yeah. him <laughs> yes what i'm gonna do i will call because he's from africa mm -hmm. so he is on their facebook he's doing live show so people called him so i called him today to you know a little bit i can do but I was trying to bring you in. So what I'm going to do when it's live, I'm going to call you on Skype okay. and put him online with you. So because I told him and he was telling me I should bring you in, I should bring you in that they will bring your bring your big man. So and I believe through the grace of God and the wisdom that God has given to you, you're able to explain better and I'll show him the because I believe they don't know much and I know that he's just reading what he don't know. So. Mm -hmm. By, by Wednesday, please, just, you know, uh, because I've told him it's a challenge to him and he was bragging mm. all this. So, please, Wednesday, next weekend. Okay, what, but I, now what if I lose? What we would do if I lose? What you would do? No, 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 you, can't. <laughs> you can't because I know the guy don't understand what he's doing. My friend, my friend it doesn't matter who is going to come to debate me. Even if it's Allah himself, I will make him shish kebab. Don't worry, I'm just kidding. You know, yeah, no, <laughs> thank you very much for the good work and the low help you, sir. <laughs> take, take care, my friend. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> Actually, I always, you know, if you go to Amazon.com, if I show you my account there, number one thing I buy is a glue because each time I debate a Muslim, I have to glue myself together. He destroy me. He go to the chat and he say I destroyed him. Once a Muslim guy, he was speaking to me in a chat room in Palto. He went to other Muslim rooms and he said to them, I was debating Christian Prince and I destroyed him. All the Muslim in the chat, even they are Muslim, they said to him, you are right, we were there, brother. Come on. <laughs> even the Muslim, they told him, you are right, we were there. He thought nobody was there. So like, you know, I destroyed him, brother. I honest to Allah, I destroyed him. Yeah, his nose was big and I lost my teeth. Uh, Islam is a very stupid religion. And sadly, you know, uh, people in Africa or many countries, Indonesia, they do not know how stupid this cult is. They don't speak the language, they don't speak Arabic. Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend. How are you? I'm all right. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Great. You. Yeah. So uh, this um, evening I called Sheikh Tala mm. to wish him a Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. and we had a very long discussion okay. and uh he agrees that uh muhammad hijab did a horrible mistake in the debate mm -hmm. and on top of it um he says he wants to 
uh, spend time, he wants to learn. He's seeking the truth. Mm. And uh, so far, he believes that Islam is the way for him. He is a Quranist only. He doesn't reject the Hadith because they were introduced by evil men who wanted to discredit the uh, mm. Prophet Muhammad. And he also believed that Muhammad actually was evil and did a lot of evil things. Uh, or did things wrong. And he wants to spend time in going through the word. I was uh, in a restaurant and driving, so I couldn't really get into a deep conversation with him. So he says, if you're able to convince me, I promise you, brother, I will convert. I said, no problem. I cannot convert you. Only Christ can. And the Holy Spirit can convict you. So I'm just saying it out there. I shared with my TP because I talked to her a lot. And um, I want everybody here who's a Christian to lift Sheikh Tala in, in, you know, in prayer. And why is this? I believe that he sees a lot of filth in the hadith that he's ashamed of. So he says he's a Quranist. And he tells me to read the uh, Quran written by uh, Rashid, whatever, um, the Rashid guy. And um, so he wants to stick with only the Quran. And it's, it's like, you know, uh, Islam has the Quran, it has the Hadith and the Sunnah and the Tafsirs. And now we've busted three, three of the types, the Tafsirs, the Hadith and the Sunnah. He doesn't believe in most of them. What about the Quran? The, last the Quran is thing very stupid. Is, the Quran alone is a disaster. You know? That's the one we need to bust. Yeah, and then he, he is, he's done. Yeah, yes. No well, and anyway, I, I you know, for me, I was upset from this guy because he shout a lot. He is always angry. And, That's he, how he and, is. He, and he is a stubborn, you know, he don't want to listen. Otherwise, look, I was speaking to this guy for what? For almost two hours? I did not shout. Mm -hmm. I did not call him names. He did not, you know, just to speak to me. Tell him, you want to speak to Christian Prince? He is willing to take his time with you. But don't shout and don't go crazy. And don't, it's a listen, just have a conversation. Let us say, let us see, okay, what you want to say, what you want to say. Have a nice conversation. Don't, uh, you know, hold on your testosterone. Don't go crazy and don't insult and don't shout. And he will listen to you, and we can talk. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, and you're right. We've been just talking to him on the phone. I was very quiet, and he talks and talks and talks. I don't interrupt. When I start talking, he just interrupts. And I was like, brother, yeah, yeah. it it doesn't help if you don't listen. So I said, we're gonna have a time. We're gonna talk, and we're gonna discuss and pray and let the truth prevail. So guys, pray for Sheikh Tala because I know when God convicts him and brings him to the to you know sees the truth he's going to be a um, a great weapon for the kingdom of god i mean, I mean. yeah well uh, everybody is welcome and we are here to help everybody and we don't hate anyone the lord he taught us to love everybody and uh, you know peace for those who love peace if you love peace the, the lord he will give you his peace you don't love it you know you will you will suffer so if he is a person of peace and when we say peace mean here uh, you, you know a person who don't like to harm anyone and he love everybody uh, mm -hmm. because even if you don't you are not really what jesus said if you have the peace which is the peace of christ anyway which means love inside you you will be able to find the messiah because you have let us say you know uh, you have a fire you know and the fire is is dead but still under the fire under the, the dust there is something shiny a little bit you know what i mean can mm -hmm. establish the fire again and this is what happened with many people so islam buried their fire which is the good fire of god inside them the good heart but they have a good heart still there even they are buried with tons of flies and garbage but sunday one day monday whatever it is suddenly mm -hmm. the dry wood will catch the fire and he will get out of the dirt and will be shiny again in the middle of the night amen and, and and just a, a testimony last last night i i met this young lady um and uh, i i was able to pray with her uh, she, her heart was really seeking the lord she's not a muslim but she's just you know besides islam we also have this new age um people believing in spirituality and all this mumbo jumbo and um i was able to pray with her and she basically um you know she's already given her life to the lord and I asked her, I uh, told her about a church that she can go to. Uh, I go to a church in New York called Hillsong. And I told her, it doesn't have to be that one. She should just find a, a good church. And her only problem is she came to the Lord, but she is already in a relationship with a boyfriend and she lives with him. And she tells me she doesn't like it 
but she left home and that's the only way she can survive. And um, she doesn't really like the lifestyle she's in, but uh, I prayed with her and I prayed for her and her name is Jessica. And I'm praying that God will also, and her boyfriend's name is Miguel. I pray that God will reach out to uh, both of them and save them. Maybe they just get married and not live in sin. I mean, my friend, so, that's wonderful. Yeah. All right. God bless you. And um, the peace of Christ be with you. Shalom. Thank you very much. My Lord, thank you very much. Uh, God is good. God is good. All right, guys, I just received a message from our friend, the one who was speaking to me, and he just announced, and he allowed me to speak. He didn't want to say that on the uh, on the mic. He just, he just, uh, uh, let me ask him if I can show his text. Right. He allowed me. He allowed me to show the text, and this is the text you can read it yourself. Let me show you. He don't want to call and use his voice. He's you know worry. And this is what he said. I accept the Messiah, but I do not want to say it's my case, my parents, relative, etc. And now I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to buy the Bible and read it. You do not need to buy it, my friend. You can download from the internet if you want. And even churches, they give it to you for free. So may the Lord bless you, my friend. And may the Lord keep you uh, safe. And we pray and we ask all the Christians that this brother who just accepted the Messiah in his heart, we did not waste our time with him. He was a good fruit from a good tree. And he just accepted the Messiah to be his Lord and his Savior. So, and I ask his permission if I can say that in the in the text, you know, as you see, can I say that in the mic? So anytime any one of you, Muslim, uh, if you don't want me to say that you left uh, Islam, it's okay, just tell me, I will not say. And anyway, I don't share names anyway. I never share names of anyone. So uh, I'm happy for you, my friend. And as he said here, leaving Islam is not easy, as you know. Uh, they are, uh, etc. Okay, and dangerous, whatever you say. But, uh, but uh, you know, you made the right decision, and you will never regret. So we are very happy for you, and we pray and we we'll ask all the Christians here to pray for this brother, so the Lord he keep him protected, and keep him in, in good hands and uh, you know reading the bible is the start for a long journey of happiness and uh, let us say i don't know how to explain to you you will feel it later for me you know because i believe i am confident and you notice that it doesn't matter who call me you see you'll notice that muslims don't dare even to open their sky for people to call because this is very hard because you don't know what the guy he's going to say to you. You know what I mean? I mean, imagine, imagine you you open your 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 challenge for anyone. Just call me. Call me. Just say whatever you want. And yet at the end, you are victorious. And when I say I'm victorious, I'm talking about my Lord. I am victorious. I've never been defeated. Because my Lord cannot be defeated. It's not Christian Prince who's debating you. I am confident because of my faith. The Lord, my friend, he said, read the books. Search for the truth, and the truth will set you free. So we as a Christians, when we read and we study, the more we learn, the more we became confident with the Lord, and the more we became strong. And armed with knowledge Christianity is not a religion or believe in blindness no you have to be educated 
This is why you see Jesus, we always he was speaking to the Jews and he, he was schooling them. What do you say of the Messiah? They said he is son of David. He was debating them. Then how David he called him Lord if he is son of David? That is the way the Messiah he speak. So debating was a way to win, not to lose always for the Messiah. He never lost. And we always win as long we are confident with our faith. You see, when 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 one of his disciples was walking in the water, when he lost his faith, he's not sure, he started drowning. When you are without faith, but remember, it's not just a blind faith. You want to debate Muslims, you have to have knowledge. You don't go and fight bacteria and viruses without studying bacteria and viruses. So faith and knowledge, they go together. Faith and ignorance, they, they, they lead to, to something bad. Because you are speaking ignorance and you are not speaking of the Lord. The Lord is not the Lord of ignorance. You cannot speak ignorance when you are saying, I speak in the name of the Lord. So we need to educate ourselves and we need to arm ourselves with knowledge. And that will make you having two armors which nobody can defeat. The truth, which is the knowledge, and the faith, which is very powerful. Uh, now we have a we have a guy in the chat, his name is Adil. He keeps calling me names, but Adil don't want to call me. I don't know why. Adil, my friend, do you like to call me? Do you want to give me a hit? Maybe you can throw some bunches on my face. What do you think, Adil? I see you keep coming here in the chat, but you don't want to call me. Why you don't call? You know what, Adil? Ask yourself this question. If you are a believer and Allah is a true God and you make a sort of prayer to Allah, he will make you victorious. What do you think? So, make a prayer to your God, Allah, and say, Allah, give me victory over Christian Prince and give me a call. And you will see you will win. What do you think, Adil? I think you will win. What do you say, Adil? You think you will win or not? Actually, I'm I'm thinking to leave now because I'm afraid you will call me. I'm afraid. So do you want to call me, my friend, before I leave? Adil, he stopped even moving. Let us debate face to face. Here we go, face to face. Okay, bring your face to me. Let us debate your face. Open your camera. I will put your camera on the screen. Are you happy now? What, what is that face to face to me? What face to face? What about I say, okay, bring me your Allah. I want to debate Allah face to face. Come on, don't, don't be silly. You're trying to avoid, you know, speaking to me by saying the same all the executors Muslim they say. The only executors Muslim they say, Christian Prince, the debate is face to face. Face to face. Trust me, if you see my face, you will collapse. You will have heart attack. The last time I asked a girl to marry me, she almost died. She said, what, you? Like, what? What? Who? What? what? Come on, don't do that to yourself. Don't, did you ask yourself why I'm still single? My friend, that looks scary. What face to face? You will lose your voice. You will lose, Even your, your voice will not come out from your throat when you see me. I go in the elevator. I say, good morning. Nobody answer because people get scared. What are you talking about? I don't advise you, my friend. Any Muslim would like to call us. <clears throat> See, guys, I make fun of myself. Uh, and I don't find that anything is offending to me. The reason? I have a confidence. Do you remember we said we spoke about confidence? I make, uh, I make fun of my look. I make fun of myself. I make fun of whatever. But that will not make me feel bad. Some people, they get badly offended. For a very simple reason. You don't have confidence. Who cares what people think? I know who I am. Love as much as you want. I am laughing too.
The Muslims, they focus in silly stuff, face to face, but they are not saying answer to answer, question to question. This is what they fear, but face to face. When the Christians ask Muhammad to debate him, Muhammad did not say, let us debate face to face. Muhammad, he said, let us have a cursing party because he's a coward. Bring your wives, I bring my wives. Bring your goat, I bring my goat. And let us invoke curse upon the one is lying. Who is lying here? Have you ever heard of such a debate? So a real debate in Islam is going to be as the following. Read with me carefully what the Quran is saying and love. If anyone dispute in this matter, which means about Jesus, now after the full knowledge has come to you, amazing knowledge, man, this is the full knowledge. Come, come, say to them, say to them, come. Okay, come, come, come. You know, you see uh, Hijab was saying to David Wood, show me, answer me. No, no, this is not the way to do Islam. He says, come, let us get together, gather together, our sons and your sons, our women and your women, okay, is that a debate? No, ourself and yourself, okay, what is this gathering for? Party? Have dinner? What? No. Then let us pray to invoke curse on the one is lying. I mean, this is the most stupid debate ever. So I will take the mic, I will say, Christian Prince, your turn. I say, may Allah cut my nose if I'm lying. Your turn. You take the mic, you say, may Allah close the door of the van over my fingers if I'm lying. Your turn. I take the mic. Okay, may Allah make a hole in my shoe if I'm lying. Your turn. I mean, this is the most stupid debate ever. This is a debate. It's a cursing party. And then, according to Islam, the one who get tired first, keeps like they keep you keep doing that for like I mean two days. The one who get tired first is the is a loser. <laughs> Same time here. Anyone notice something stupid in this statement? Anyone notice something stupid? Something extremely stupid additional to this at the end of the verse. Do you see at the end of the verse it says, curse the one who is lying. I will explain to you how stupid the statement is. If I debate a Muslim and he is being honest and he said to me, Muhammad is a prophet. Yes, he believes in a lie, but he's not lying. Correct? This is his belief. If a Muslim says to me in heaven there's versions, he believes in a lie, but he is not lying. Which mean he himself is telling me what he believes. Lie, lie, you lie if you say something you don't believe in. Correct? If you say something and you know something else, that is a lie. If I say to you, Did you eat the food and you are the one who ate the food? That is a lie. But if you believe you did not eat the food, let us say this person is unaware, he is, uh, you know. Uh, he was under drugs and he did something when he's under drugs. He did not know. I did not do it. He's not lying. If I speak to a person, he's a Hindu. And he said to me, I believe in this God. He is wrong, but he's not lying. He's telling me what he believed. So here you will see that Muhammad, because he have the mentality of a liar, he assumed that anyone who speak to him, he see him as a liar. It's like saying to me, let us invoke God to see who is the whore. Why? Because he knew who he is. Otherwise, nobody said to you, you are a whore. We are just asking to see the truth. What does this have to do with lying? Unless you yourself, you are a liar. And because you are a liar, you feel always, as a liar, you feel guilty. It's like a thief he is wanted by the police. The second he hear the, 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 the car of the police coming, he run because he thinks it's coming for him. That is a very stupid answer and cannot be from God. Do we have any Muslim here? All right, guys, I want to say thank you for everybody. I want to say thank you again for those who they are helping us with donation. I really appreciate you, uh, even though you don't need me to mention that.
uh, I appreciate all of you I appreciate the gentleman who called us and he became a Christian he accepted the Messiah I pray from my heart for him and for his family to open their heart to receive him to accept him to 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 uh, to support him uh, I, I pray that the Lord he will send him good friends good people to be around him and I always through my life the Lord he put in the front of me in my way wonderful people even though I do extremely dangerous stuff the Lord is always with me when you are with the Lord the Lord is with you so we pray for everybody for all the Muslims we love them we don't hate them we might shout at you we might scream when we speak to you just because we love you when you see your friend your son your daughter your family your brother is taking drugs you don't shout at them to stop taking drugs because you hate them but because you want to save them and this is exactly what we do Islam is nothing but the drugs God is not a vagina vendor God is not a pimp to make his house a pimp house God is not dirty filthy God is not stupid God is not ignorant God is not hateful person God is not evil and that is all your God sadly my friend I invite you Muslims to believe in the true God the Messiah the Lord of peace the king of peace the one who said things nobody said before love your enemy and nobody will say after and until now after 2000 years of Jesus you will not find in the United Nations someone dare to say love your enemy after all what they claim about the human rights nobody can come with this love your enemy plus those who curse you that is my Lord so think carefully about who is your Lord and why you are following him and why you are not with my Lord the one who teach what we just heard together thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you and I will see you soon again remember in the coming Wednesday look like we will have a debate from with the Muslim he claimed to be a scholar from Nigeria for sure we have a week from now but look like you know this gentleman from Nigeria he is organizing this so I hope we will have a good time and maybe we can bring this person to Christ and as long as he have many 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 followers that will be a very good opportunity to uh, expose this cult loud and open thank you very much may the Lord bless you and enter we see you soon again this is a Christian Prince who was with you and with this we pray that the Lord will guide us and we will keep us together as a family of Christ even though we do not know each other Christ is Lord Islam is false I mean to that see you soon